Hello and welcome to Still Got Legs, a Doctor Who rewatch podcast brought to you by another Happy Studios. This week a pilot is dead, the children aren't snug in their bed, and Maud has a forest in her head. Even more, do you fucking idiot? The back and forth that we just did silently while the intro was playing. Nathan's like, Maud? I was like, oh no, shit, it's Madge. <laughs> you idiot, I can't even. Oh, let me do my intro. Okay. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Still Got Legs, the only Doctor Who rewatch podcast in the world. There are no others that exist, so stop looking for them. Otherwise, I'll tell your mum. Oh, and no. If you don't have a mum, well, I'm your mum now. And trust me, <laughs> I won't be happy to hear you've been looking for other Doctor Who themed podcasts. My name is Nathan. <laughs> as always, I'm joined by my wonderful companion as we go on this fantastic journey through time and space to rewatch all of Doki Who. Hello, Lawrence, or Maud, if you prefer. I don't prefer Maud. It was a mistake, <laughs> an honest mistake, <laughs> okay? Right off the bat as well. <laughs> That's the worst possible place to make a mistake, all right? Yeah, but then, look, it's afforded us a little humour, all right, up top. <laughs> Everyone's probably <laughs> laughing at my expense. No, yeah, it's bad. It's bad. <laughs> don't try to spin this into a positive thing. Okay? It was actually planned all along. This is just no, the little humour that we're incorporating. What an idiot you are. But well done. Good on you. Thanks. I, 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 I'll be I, honest. It's it's probably it's taken the heat off the rest of the intro, <laughs> which I assume was quite bad but honestly i can't remember okay i mostly focused on the whole mold of it all, all right? the look in your face when you heard that uh, i come to you humbly as well i have a request uh, an on episode request Indeed. you're putting me in a corner here because <laughs> now i can't say well it depends i might you're making me look bad depending well, no, no, on what no. it is it's 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 an opportunity i, I come to you humbly um, it's right. It's a Christmas episode, right? It's Christmas in September. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas to you, Nathan. Matt, happy holidays. Oh, oh. I want to say Merry Christmas. Oh, no. I'm part of the. I'm, <laughs> I'm part of the woke mob <laughs> and uh, my war on Christmas. So I refuse to say it. Um, when will it ever yes, end? I'm trying to take Christmas away from you. I can't believe okay? it. <laughs> yes. Um, right. <laughs> if it's Christmas, yes. then I have a New Year's resolution that by the time it comes to my intro in two weeks' time, we'll be in the new year. That's the logic, correct? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> Just go with it. <laughs> okay. I, I said Maud by accident. Right? I'm struggling and I need your help. All right, well, so what are, what are you proposing? To quote Rogue One, to misquote Rogue One, what is he proposing? <laughs> Such a niche quote from Rogue One, I by the way. <laughs> no. Uh, I come to you humbly to request that I no longer have to adhere to the self-imposed limitations of the rhyming. Lawrence, I've never imposed this, okay? You don't need to ask my permission. But I've been trying to prove it for, for like, I don't know, how long have I been doing the intros now? Better part of, like, months and since, months. Since Series 5 began, oh and we finished Series 6, so that's... 26 weeks? It's about half a year. Oh, my God, yeah. All right, Six please. months, yeah. Yeah, about six months. I've done my penance. Rhyming is hard. <laughs> it's annoying. Clearly things fall through the cracks, as you've heard today. <laughs> Lawrence, okay. Again, you don't need my permission, so I'm not going to give it. Okay? Okay. <laughs> it's it's on you. If you want to make that decision, <laughs> you've got to grow up. You've got to make that decision. Okay? okay. It, I'll tell you what. It's Lawrence's choice. Okay? Oh, very nice. Okay. Yes. Good. I'm putting the decision in your hands. Okay. All right. What if I do it and it's worse? That's what I can, I've been grappling <laughs> well, with. That's, that's what you got to deal with. you got to deal with the consequences. What if I can't you know? pull off it being cool? Like, uh, there's something going on at Christmas. Whoa, what are we going to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That is cool. <laughs> what if you can't pull that off? <laughs> oh, gosh. Hello. Merry Christmas. I guess we'll find out. Lawrence, I have a question for you. Yeah, hit the theme. Uh, okay. Another happy question. For anyone who's confused, that's a long, <laughs> long, long dead segment from another podcast. <laughs> which um, uh, we uh, anyway. Um, which I just haven't deleted the sound off my board yet. Um, wh wh what? I forgot. I was, was that the question? Uh, no, no, no. I've been thrown by that segment. So. No. <laughs> 
Um, oh no, here's the question. I remember the question. Okay, have you listened to our episode oh, on the no. God Complex? For God's yes. sake! <laughs> Fuck I off warned with you. It. I warned you. I'd be asking. <laughs> you need to do your duty. Okay. Oh God, like Yvonne to the Queen and Country. I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm sorry, Nathan. I'm sorry, Catherine. No, I have I've not yet listened to the God Complex. Episode. Say the line, Lawrence. Say the line. What's the line? I've been busy. Ah, <laughs> oh, you've always been fucking busy. All right. I just moved. I don't care. <laughs> Three weeks ago or something now. Exactly. <laughs> you moved in by now. All right. I've seen your house. I've still got boxes. As long as there's boxes, care. I'm busy. All right. I don't care. And well, then why are you unpacking those boxes? Because I got to do the podcast, Nathan. I'm dedicated. All right? I'm here. I'm writing rhymes. I'm, I'm, You're not- I'm confusing names. You're not that dedicated if you haven't listened yet. Oh, that is true. No, I, I, I come to you humbly again to apologise. It is, it is my bad. So not only have you not appeared on every episode, <laughs> you haven't even listened to every episode. So. Fuck's sake! All right, but yeah. sometimes I've listened to them back to check like audio quality and stuff. Doesn't, doesn't that count? count? Doesn't count? No, no, because you listened to it as we recorded it. Okay, that's when you listened to it. Uh, All right? Okay. All right. Yeah, you lived it, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, that's fair. All right, fine. I'm sorry, okay? I'm very sorry. It's just been a poor well, show for me hey, since the get-go. Well, well, we'll check back in next week. And as I said, <laughs> I will be answering it, asking it every week until there's a yes. So, there's part of me that doesn't can't want to. can't lie now. as well, because I'll test you, all right? <laughs> okay. I'll be telling you what I will have follow-up questions, okay? What if they're incredibly specific and I did listen, but it will sound like I didn't? <laughs> Well, no, you'll you'll have to prove another way. Okay, okay. <laughs> fine. All right, Nathan, it's Christmas time. It is, and we are celebrating Christmas in September by watching a Christmas special, uh, which is, of course, episode 88 of Doki Who. Episode 88 of Still Got Legs. It's written by Stephen Moffat, directed by Farron Blackburn. Whoa. It is The Doctor, The Widow, and The Wardrobe. That title sounds a little bit familiar yeah. to me. <laughs> How does Stephen Moffat come up Ooh. with these crazy, <laughs> complex ideas? How does he do it? I wonder. <laughs> General thoughts. I was a bit thrown off by it being Christmas. What do you think? What do you mean? Well, I'm always thrown off when I, I go, oh, it's a Christmas special. I got to say, I'm not in particularly in the festive spirit. It's a bit too early for that. But Well, the Christmas stuff is in the shot. I'll tell you what. Let's pause the episode for a second and let me go on a rant okay. and explain the most tragic thing that happened to me this week. Okay. All right. Okay. I was doing my shopping. You know, I order a little Iceland shop every now and then. Yeah. Um, I, I, I Exactly. I got myself a little sweet treat as well. I ordered mm-hmm. myself because all the Christmas stuff is in shop. I went, oh, you know what? I'm going to get myself a Terry's chocolate orange. Oh, okay? nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, lo- I love a Terry's chocolate orange. A delicious sweet treat for me. I was like, I deserve this. All right. I'm going to have this. <laughs> okay. I put in my order. I order my delicious sweet treat. I'm good to go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Shopping comes, unpack, beautiful stuff. I go for my sweet treat. I get my Terry's chocolate orange. I'm like, the fuck is that? Oh, no. That looks a little bit different. Let me tell you, okay. Oh, no. I ordered a Terry's chocolate orange, and I checked my receipt. I checked my order confirmation, okay? I received a Terry's chocolate. What? Sorry? (laughs) What? Exactly. This seems to be a new product for this year, okay? So it's a Terry's chocolate orange without the orange, okay? So it's the ball, same ball. Now it's in a blue wrapper. Instead of the orange, okay? Right. It's segmented, but it's not orange-flavoured chocolate. It's just regular milk chocolate. So it's the shape and of I, the orange. It's the shape of the orange, it has the but slices. the wrapper is blue. The ra- It has the slices. It's segmented like an orange. <laughs> Everything is the exact same apart from the wrapper and, of course, the flavour. I was like, what the fuck is this? What is this absolute <laughs> nightmare that I have been dealt here? Okay. Of all the places it could go, I didn't think it would end up with plain <laughs> chocolate. Like it's it's pretty hard to fuck that one. <laughs> it's outrageous. In what world oh. is plain milk chocolate better than a lovely, delicious orange chocolate? Yeah, and that's a specific kind of craving as well. Like a chocolate, you don't mm. get a chocolate orange in often. Like not just no, you, but no. the people don't do that often. No, it's it's a rare treat yeah. to get a chocolate orange. Yeah, I, mean, I just said I had to settle for. Regular orange shaped but not flavoured chocolates. I guess. So you're there playing the game like an infant, wishing you had the flavour. Like, look, oh, look at me, I've got my orange, I've got my slice, but where's the flavour? 
What's the game? What game are you playing? You, no, you're doing the thing, aren't you? You're getting the orange, you're peeling the slice out. Is you're that do- a game? No, you, but you're doing all the work, but you don't get the reward of the, the orange flavour. Yeah, I'm not describing it as a game, though. <laughs> okay. The only it's game a... I know how to play is Sabak. Oh, yeah, I know, I know you know how to play Sabak. All right, I'm playing Sabak. Anyway, enough about that. It is Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, did I say what the episode is already? Yeah, you did. What are your thoughts on Okay. It? What are your thoughts on it, Lawrence? <laughs> the Uno reverse. A classic, a Nathan staple. <laughs> That's how they do it in Sabuck. I I like this. I like this quite a lot. I, <clears throat> I I didn't remember a fucking thing about this, right? Not a single <laughs> thing other than the Narnia esque title. Um I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> My mistake. That's the that's the yeah, No, it's it's week. great. I think it's it's a good concept. I think the plot maybe is a little it's a teeny bit undercooked but it's so, wrong it, it, no listen oh, c- no because it's 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 one of these episodes that is so <clears throat> drunk off its own christmas spirit and joy that by the end of it i'm like oh no i'm having a really good festive time <laughs> like if this was on on christmas day no complaints none this is this is you a good one. The, you finished the episode and suddenly found yourself in a festive sweater <laughs> and a little paper crown hat <laughs> Upon your head. I'm holding like, a gingerbread cane in one hand. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> My yeah. wife's like, I don't know, you didn't move. <laughs> I don't know how this happened. <laughs> Let me tell you, okay. Yeah. The 180 I have done on this episode. Okay. okay yeah. Needs to be studied. Okay. <laughs> much like much like my opinion of the Batman. Okay. Right. It has indeed 180 because when I first saw this episode, okay, I remember specifically watching this as it's aired on Christmas as a piece of shit, dumb 18-year-old cunt, yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, Probably slightly drunk because I was 18 and thought I was rock fucking solid, <laughs> all right? Okay. <laughs> so, so I watched this episode and I remember thinking that was the worst Christmas special of Doctor Who I've ever seen. Wow. I said, a man who had seen the Cyberman Christmas episode, whose yeah. name I fu- fucking forgot even now. The next Doctor, there it is. Or the Christmas Invasion. <laughs> yeah, but that's better than the next Doctor. Yeah, true. That is true. Yeah, so my point still stands. Okay, okay. fine, fine. <laughs> I just wanted to chime in. <laughs> I I remember watching this. I remember thinking it was so dull and boring and yeah. there was absolutely nothing to it. And I'm like... I'll never watch that again. Absolutely. <laughs> Chugs on you. Boring, boring dreck, okay? And let me tell you, all right? And to be fair, this, I, I was obviously wrong about never watching it again because I actually rewatched it a few years ago, which is when I was like, oh, okay, no, I was wrong. I was, okay, I was yeah. 100% wrong. Um, I don't know what happened. I don't know if I just experienced loss or grief or just something happened to me yeah. but now uh, now that i can fully understand this maybe because, since i have developed a fully adult brain mm. i'm like oh, okay no this is a, a certified christmas banger if there ever was one this is the bangers that you wrap the bacon around to have little pigs in blankets okay? <laughs> okay. this <laughs> is truly a christmas miracle this is a fucking amazing episode yeah. filled with such beautiful moments some of the most beautiful uh lines put to paper it's mm. such a truly incredible festive episode it warms my heart so much and there is one scene in particular uh which which every without without fail every time i watch it apart from the first time because i was a dumb cunt mm. it, it just kills me it truly kills me and i can't watch it without breaking down um but yeah <clears throat> but yeah it's beautiful i love it so is this a victory of the daleks level 180 i think it is yeah wow it is okay yeah a rare moment. No, I think it. I'll tell fucking... you what, we're we're hitting all the big ones today. We've got certified banger, and we'll also possibly have an appearance of some Doctor Who magic. I think. Whoa. Okay. All right. Okay. Big talk. Yeah. Is... Like, come on. You. You know. No. No. I'm. I'm with you. I'm just saying it's rare yeah. that you throw them all out in one. Well, at the Peter's Christmas, you know, I'm feeling festive. <laughs> okay. I've got my paper hat on. I've got my jumper. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I um. Is is the consensus good on this? Do people not like this, or do they like it? I think it's I think it's one of those where like I don't think I was alone in thinking it was quite boring and dull and I think like it's yeah. one something that people need to revisit and I think those who have can appreciate it mm. and I think those who don't appreciate it 
need to revisit it because they're wrong. Yeah, and you need to revisit it, by the way, because <laughs> yeah. you are wrong factually. Because <laughs> you are wrong. <laughs> okay. There are no opinions here. There are only facts. I think this happens, though, right? Because we, I think we've both gotten mushier as we've got older. Like, at uni, oh, we were two rock-solid yeah. bullies. We were cool guys. In more ways than one. Yeah. <laughs> Talking about erect people. Yeah, no, I got it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad we spelt it out. That's good. That's good. <laughs> Very good. All right. On that lovely note, should we get into it? <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Yes, we should. <laughs> oh, what happens, Lawrence? Because I have no notes. Are you joking? No notes. I am joking. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So this, you're slowly <laughs> leaning into this becoming just the thing now. <laughs> I wrote my notes. It took me a while, but I wrote them. Yeah, okay. it's an hour long. It threw me off. Did you write your notes? I did write my notes. All right. Don't but I was you're... hoping you would write yours as well, because they're not as detailed as they normally are. <laughs> oh! No, I don't want to no, hear it from you, all right? No quotes from Lawrence this week. Uh, not that he um, ever has any quotes anyway. Oh, shush. Right. Russell yeah. Earthshot opens us up. He'd be proud. Why? Because it's a big old spaceship mm. of uh, over Earth. Big spaceship as well. I feel. I feel it was very reminiscent of the opening. I'm not sure if you've seen a little movie called Star Wars: A New Hope, 1977. Never heard of it. No. Well, it starts off with a spaceship mm. kind of just like flying over the camera. So it's a little bit like that. I think. I want to continue this bit, but I also wrote that note, so I just want us to bond over that <laughs> <Okay>. for a bit. <laughs> right. I like it. It's like, it's like um, it, it does keep on going. You go, oh my god, it's a, it's a spaceship. Oh my god, it's a big spaceship. Oh, it's a massive, long spaceship. Perhaps it's a mothership. It could even be a mothership. Oh, this <laughs> is. Um, I do like that it starts opening all of its little flaps, and you're like, this is a peaceful scene, and then all of a sudden it starts blowing up. <laughs> no, it starts go, starts opening all its flaps, and then big guns appear, and then it just goes. People of Earth, you are about to die. And then it just starts blowing up, which is which is good fun. Um, and then, of course, we see the Doctor mm. uh, doing what he does best. He's running down those corridors. He's having a good time. Do you, do you think people on Earth were, like, just going about their life and all of a sudden a booming voice across the entire planet, you prepare to die, and then nothing <laughs> happened? Like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> do you guys fucking hear that? What the fuck? They definitely said it, didn't they? We definitely all heard that. <laughs> It'd be like the, the, a worldwide Mandela effect situation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's true. He would. He would. That's very fun. Um, yeah, so the ship starts to explode. So obviously the Doctor's blown up this uh, this ship somehow. Yeah. Um, uh, but unfortunately, he's done so with himself still on it. Okay. I don't know if we saw the TARDIS on the ship or if it just went down to Earth. I don't I, think we I didn't did, see it. Did I didn't. I couldn't no. recall it, yeah. No, so anyway, he's on the ship. I assume the TARDIS has just gone to Earth. It's been Professor x somehow. Yes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, the, uh, the ship is exploding, um, and he's kind of thrown from the ship as it's mm. exploding. Uh, but luckily, so is a spacesuit. Okay. <laughs> what, a, what a stroke of <laughs> stupid dumb luck. <laughs> An empty spacesuit, okay? Oh, thank God. Just happily <laughs> waiting by the airlock door on the ground. Not been sucked well, where out. where else would it be? It makes sense that it's by the airlock door. That's that's true. That does make sense. Yes. All right, fine. I'm nitpicking. Yeah. You are nitpicking. Hit me with a cinema sins. That. Oh, yeah. Hold well on. Oh, wait. No, that's not it. Hi! Oh, fuck. <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I don't normally call on you this much. <laughs> I know. I, um, I have got a note that says, Cor, look at all the budget. And then I immediately regretted writing it. Because, right, as we know, Christmas specials, normally a lot of people's intro into Doctor Who. Because back in the day, they yes. were a staple. Maybe not so much at this point. But yes, they were big family, you know, primetime TV, 7 p.m. ish on a Saturday, on a, not Saturday, on 7 p.m. ish on Christmas Day. On a day. Christmas Day, whatever yeah. day that may fall. Yeah, so it could be any day, really. On could a Wednesday, maybe. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> the, the scenes. Um, <laughs> but normally this is when, like, a, the opening minutes of a Christmas special of Doctor Who, that's when they've got a lot of eyes on, more so eyes than normal on Doctor Who. So they try and, they try and put a good opening attached to these things right so that they go oh people go oh Chris, i will watch Doctor Who. there's a new season coming out next year or whatever um and it is funny that the first shot matt smith running away from the explosions incredible and then it cuts to immediately it looks hokier and worse <laughs> like in just following shots as the sequence goes on it just gets worse and worse looking <laughs> But I don't think anyone has ever tuned into Doctor Who for their groundbreaking visual. 
effects. No, but I'm saying they're hoodwinking people. They're trying to tell them well, this show always has okay. great special effects, by the way. But it doesn't. No. <laughs> it very much does not. Yeah, it doesn't look that great. It just looks mm. like very much Matt Smith just waving about in front of a green screen. It looks like he's trying to swim his way over to the... to the. Yeah, he probably is. Yeah. He's just laying on a green box at the end of the day, isn't he? That's all he's doing. Yeah, it's just true. trying to... If only, if only we could find out in some behind-the-scenes show, possibly called Confidential. <sighs> um, but alas, it is it is no longer the case. I was wrong last week. I, pr- I boldly claimed that it, that it was this week, but I was wrong. I you were wrong. It's okay, though. You've admitted your mistake, and we've all made mistakes. I don't know what happened. I think when I went to look on BBC iPlayer, I was, must have just been looking at like the season one page and just saw, oh, yeah, Christmas special. There we go. That's that's that. Yeah. But, <laughs> Done. I don't know. Yeah. It was a faux pas, but we forgive you. All right. Thank you. The most Thank important you. thing here is that the confidential is done and we're all sad. Yes. And we're all sad about it. Yeah. yeah. Um anyway, uh so yes, he's he's fallen to earth and that's when we cut to titles. Lawrence, tell us all what's different about this title sequence. I don't know. I looked down to write notes. What is different? Oh, you fucking idiot. <laughs> what's different? You missed it. You missed it. <laughs> you gotta tell now you can tell me though. Isn't that lovely? No, I want you to say it. I I'm not going to go back and watch the first 15 seconds. No, we got, we got to go back and watch the full episode again. <laughs> right, everyone uh, bear with me an hour. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, there is no Karen Gillan or Arthur Darville in the title sequence. A crime. Instead, it's Matt Smith and Claire Skinner. Claire Skinner, the outnumbered mum. Outnumbered mum, mm. yes. Look at her the mum from Outnumbered. Outmumbered. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we found a name for the episode. It's <laughs> Um So she's she's on her beautiful bicycle. She's got a lovely basket in the front, very French. I like it. Um, <laughs> they've always got Sorry. that. You know, you know when you see like French French culture depicted in any other medium that isn't by French people, they've always got like little bicycles with baguettes in them and stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and they're wearing a little striped sh- yeah. striped shirts and a beret, and yeah. they've got a, a ring of garlic around <laughs> their neck, have they, as well? <laughs> they've often got a thin pencil moustache. <laughs> yeah, with curls up around the end. You know. I think we're just describing Bon Voyage from The Incredibles. <laughs> yeah, but... Ha, <laughs> Monsieur Quiab! <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so hmm. there's a... Did you notice? I don't know if you caught this. There's a red police box. thought that was a clever wink to Doctor Who. A red police box. Yeah. So you know, you, you know, just North... mean a red phone box. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> little little joke I was doing. There. <laughs> okay. Fuck off! I gave you out mumbered. You can't give me that. <laughs> I gave you out mumbered. Yeah, but I I forgave it. I forgave the terrible pun. <laughs> It's good. All right, fine. It was good. Anyway, Al Mumbard is on her bike. All right. Mm-hmm. Here's here's something interesting. Uh, I guess Claire Skinner is kind of our, our companion for the episode, or a one-off, anyway. Yeah. Um, and companion from a different time era, from mm. 19, 1940s wartime England. Very, a little bit different, a little bit exciting, a little bit interesting. I, for the longest time, have wanted a companion from... Either a different time or a different planet or just something other than just modern day Earth, yeah, England, yeah. specifically because like I understand why they do it because it's the modern day audience, it's the audience I and everything and everything like that. But like, yeah, I know I just think it would be so interesting to have to be able to see this through the eyes of someone who isn't who doesn't know what an iPhone is. You know, I think. After, since a show that's been going on in the 60s, right? If you're locked in, right? Even if it's even if you didn't watch classic, if you just watched New Who, <clears> right? Yeah. It's been going on since 2005. If you still need your hand held with an audience surrogate, <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you, mate. <laughs> yeah. Maybe watching stuff isn't for you, but yeah, I don't know. I um I agree. It's such a because it is interesting. It adds just to such a different layer. Like you get there's mm. there's moments later on without Mumbled where she like she does cool stuff that you wouldn't really see contemporary characters do like she's pulling she's putting Mm. a wartime piece out on people like spoilers no but like she's because she's from a different time like and it's Mm. and it's there's different ideals and it's it's interesting but (laughs) oh boy are there different ideals (laughs) yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) oh wait no oh no i think we have the same something (laughs) we'll talk about it okay (laughs) all right um, so there's a big crater where the mm-hmm. doctor has obviously fallen from the intro like we see uh down to earth 
Yeah, he's fallen like a meteorite yeah. down to earth, and that this is knocked uh, out mumbered off her bike. Yeah, um, and she's she's gone over to investigate, and she's just found uh, the doctor there in the crater. He's, he's managed to get into the spacesuit, mm. so that's good. That's good. Um, and she like lifts up the helmet, and we just see the back of his head, uh, and then we just hear the doctor say, "I can't see. I'm blind." <laughs> 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 uh, she tells him she has his, his helmet on backwards and he just says oh yeah I got dressed in a hurry so that makes sense it's I I always think it's fun when you give Matt Smith a chance to do stuff like this like just just yeah. make him act the goof for a little bit and I know his doctor is being written as a bit more of a goof as time goes on but like getting him to do his silly absurdist comedy while he's like can't see and stuff is great see it's it's very interesting because I feel like they Easily could have probably saved himself a bit of money, got Matt Smith just to do the voiceover for this mm. scene, just to ADR it and to not have him in the suit. But like, and it's not confirmed, but I definitely feel like they got him in the suit just yeah. from the pure physicality of them move. Like, I know Matt Smith's physicality. The way that guy <laughs> is moving around, I'm like, that's a hundred percent Matt Smith. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's it's he's just he's he's got a certain quirk about the way he moves. Mm. It's just like. Oh yeah, that's that fucking idiot. Like a, like an erratic that. loony, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like he's <laughs> as, this is not quite yet, but like he's he's like <laughs> fiddling around his spacesuit for the keys to the TARDIS. Like he's it, yes. the way he's like just kind of all over himself is yeah, you can tell. I think you can definitely tell. A hundred percent. So uh so out mumbered, she borrows her neighbor's car yes. uh, and drives the doctor to 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 go find the TARDIS. Um, and he's still in the suit, which is essentially repairing his body, basically. <laughs> yeah. Bit of fun. Which, which, which makes sense, because the dude did fall from space, okay? So, <laughs> so I'd imagine he'd have a few broken bones, at least. I, I wrote out the note saying that that, um, that that jump that Ten did from a spaceship into the, yeah. the Naismith <laughs> Manor is looking a far yeah. less silly now. And then I just <laughs> sadly deleted that note. <laughs> when, they, when he was like, oh, it's my self-repairing suit. And I was like, fuck, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, you you breezed over you. that we meet, uh, we meet Alt Mumbard's <clears throat> family very briefly. Yeah, I was going to get back to that. But, oh, thanks. okay. Well, no, um, but hang on a minute. I'm never allowed to get back to anything. If you think I missed a second, you tell me. <laughs> So yes, we do meet. Our, well, we meet some of her family anyway. Mm. We meet the kids. We meet Cyril and Lily, and we meet Mister Smith. Not yet, we don't. No, he comes in. He's like, "Where's your mum off to then?" Well, yeah, yeah. When he when he goes off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, Mister Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mister Smith. I know it's Mister Smith. All right. It's the guy who hosts Pointless. Yeah, it's um, it's the guy who does those comedy sketches where he's um, he's the World War Two pilot, which I thought was quite funny that he's playing a, a World War Two pilot here as well. But he, you know, the ones that are like, oh, my pants is well sick. You seen them? You seen that sketch? No, I'm not. I feel like you have, and I'm just you're just letting me die out here. <laughs> I, I mean, I may have, but I don't recall it currently. It's a good one. They play World War Two pilots, but if they spoke with like what 2010s modern day slang was. All right. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> I hate you. That sounds cool, man. <laughs> right, fucking... So the kid loves telescopes. He's a little nerd. I'm going to get... I mean, we, we see him using a telescope. I don't think that... Uh, sure, we can say he loves telescopes, I guess, just because he happens to be using one. <laughs> I'm just going off what the information you're like. You're is. like fucking exhibit, all right? <laughs> fucking... <laughs> Again, I heard you love telescopes, so we made your entire car a fucking telescope because you used a telescope that one time. It doesn't function, it's just a telescope now. It's just a big telescope now. We sold your car and we replaced it with a big telescope instead. All right. And if you press it, it bounces. And also there's LCD screens in the wheels. <laughs> because that's what we fucking do here at Pimp My Ride. Um, we'll never get bored about joking about Pimp My Ride. It's a funny show. It's so ridiculous. It's just played um, dead straight, which is what my favourite thing about it is. Speaking of pimp my ride, yeah. out mumbered pimps her neighbour's ride, and by that I mean steals it um, <laughs> to drive the doctor it's a great to the TARDIS. What did you think of this uh, little little uh, little bit of uh, comedy that is attempted <laughs> when they're like, oh, bloody woman driver, am I right, fellas? Oh, it I don't know. It's a, it's an odd episode, especially because the 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 main takeaway is powerful women. 
Yes. But it's Stephen Moffat. He can't help himself, can he? This yeah, is what he does. It's strange, isn't it? It's strange that it's like... <laughs> I don't know. It's like it's like two steps forward, one step back. A yeah, bit, that's all, that's it's... his way. Stephen Moffat has a knack for writing interesting, cool, <laughs> clever female characters, and then yeah. having a man walk on screen and be like, "Bloody women <laughs> drivers!" <laughs> Bloody hell! <laughs> We've been here a lot. We've been know, we bumped into a lot of things along the way here, didn't we? <laughs> Get a load that of my fine. wife, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit odd. Anyway, um, they find the TARDIS, um, and everything's fine. This is another moment where mm. I wrote down a note and then just sadly <laughs> deleted it. <laughs> okay. I, I said um, that the hordes of Genghis Khan couldn't get through that door, and believe me, they tried, Nathan. I don't know if you recall such a quote. To be fair, the episode also made that note when, like... <laughs> When the doctor pointed out that suddenly the last 900 years of time travel don't seem quite as safe. Yeah. You know? And I was with him. So, I was on board. I was like, yeah, that's silly. This shouldn't be okay. a thing that's allowed. And then lo and behold. Little did you know, Lawrence, the fool that you are. They got me. Right? It wasn't actually the TARDIS. It was just an ordinary police box. I like that. Bit of fun. It is a bit, bit of fun. Bit of fun. Yeah. Use the time setting to your advantage. Was there phone boxes on the streets in 19... 19- 39, 30? When is this set? This Well, this is three years before the rest of the episode. Mm. But when's the rest of the episode set? Uh, I assume 1940-something. 41, but I think she says later on. 41, does she say? I think so, yeah. Okay. I'll have to take your word for that. Okay. So this is 1938. Yeah. So these That's things maths. weren't kind about, were they? Well, I don't know. I have no fucking <laughs> idea, to be honest with you. I don't know when they started <laughs> popping up on the streets. Could be, could not. I I, know. I do think it's a coincidence that it's like the exact TARDIS, <laughs> the model. exact yeah. same model. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, who cares? Bit of fun. Yeah, it's I know. It, it, like it you has say. to be because then the joke wouldn't work. Yeah, you know. You, like you say, it's using it to their advantage, and it's funny. It's 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 a good little bit. I like. This. It says, "Can we try again or something?" <laughs> <laughs> bit of fun. I do like though that um, obviously he like he says his goodbye to her and stuff, and he says like. Uh, oh, if you never need me again, just make a wish mm. and stuff. And that's quite nice. That like is nice. It. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah. They're on Christmas mode. The writers know what they're doing with Christmas, <laughs> right? It's it's we're all in that those trappings. And speaking of Christmas, here are some commercials for some wonderful stuff you can buy your loved one for Christmas. <laughs> wow, that could have been anything. <laughs> I, never, I never know how to come back from the ads. <laughs> wow, what's a, what a wonderful selection of of Christmas. Uh, services products. slash products <laughs> services slash products <laughs> buy your love would want an audible subscription <laughs> <laughs> oh god um, right what is happening then so Madge Madge gets home and Mr. Smith is there He's who's Madge is that not an oh sorry outmumbered outmumbered that's two or phone parts. I would accept Maud or out or where did I get Maud from <laughs> where did you get Maud from <laughs> <laughs> this sounds nothing like Madge. Um, so Out Mumbled gets home. Mr. Smith is reading. We have code names for all of these guys. <laughs> so he's reading about the war. Yeah. He's reading about the war. Like, war looms ever Britain. Yeah, good on him. That's, I that's do... what his newspaper says. Does it say war looms? I was doing a joke. Okay, good. <laughs> He killed that dead. But don't worry about it. Okay. You I... killed it, it's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> I do like the um, the hard cut to the war straight away, though. That's very fun. Yes, yes. I mean, it cuts into quite a tragic and heartbreaking scene. But yes, yeah. um, <laughs> it does go. It does have like Madge. Oh, sorry, I remembered saying like, oh, you know, if enough people, if people keep bloody carrying on reading about the war, then of course it's going to happen. Hard cut into Mr. Smith flying the plane. Um, <laughs> Somberly. Somberly. Um, yeah, obviously quite a sad scene. You know, it's obviously... Mm. Um, we see the scene of him, of the the plane going down, essentially, and the way he, like, tell him we're going home for Christmas. And then they go down. It's the... Yeah, it is It is a bit of a tone of whiplash, because you're like, that was a funny cutaway gag. And then all of a sudden, he's, yeah. like, caressing a picture of his <laughs> wife and being like, I'm sorry, my love. <laughs> I'm like, no! I enjoy the word caressing. <laughs> well, no, he's, he's, you know, he's giving it a little... <laughs> oh, yeah, I, would, I just wouldn't use that word myself. That's a sensitive touch. That's a word. <laughs> sure. It sounds so... 
I don't know. Well, it sounds it's like it's a nice word. It's like sensual. You're doing I'm... this again. You're taking something nice and you're turning it <laughs> twisted like you did my lovely what prettiest said... princess. <laughs> Stop this! All right, I I realize everyone was mad at me for that. <laughs> everyone was like, "This is outrageous." Well, no one was like, "This is outrageous," but like, apparently, I'm the weird one. I think you were weird. the weird one. <laughs> I still think it's kind of weird, all right? Because <laughs> to think a dog is to judge a dog as you're saying one dog is more attractive than the other, all right? Mm. I understand where you're I coming from because it implies weird. a rating system. I get it. Exactly. Yes. It's like Tinder for dogs, essentially. <laughs> All right? Played by humans. Which dog are you swiping left on? Okay. You know? I don't know if this is the hill you want to die on, but I'm, I'm yeah, proud no, of you for sticking to, to it. <laughs> no, I don't think I am. I'll move on. <laughs> anyway, what's happening? Um, so oh, Mi- yeah, Mr. Mr. Smith, Smith goes down. He's dead. Yeah. And I do like Outmumbered kind of wakes up and she looks sadly across to a letter. I think this is all really, really really well done. She looks over to a letter. It is. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's a telegram, excuse you. Yeah. Sorry. My apologies. Um, Yeah. Telegram that just says the plane went down somewhere over the channel. And it's genuinely like, I don't know, just the way it's put together, it's it's really effective. Like, I met this guy five seconds ago. Mm. It's the way she's not even reading the telegram. Mm. It's like she, she just wakes up in her bed and the telegram is open on her nightstand. We see. Little flashes of the word there, you know, we just see what we need to. Deepest condolences, went down over the channel. Fuck you, he's dead. Whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, we don't need to see the rest of it. And yeah, it's 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 really sad, man. It's really heartbreaking. It is, it is. And I was sad. And then obviously followed that up with like her being in, in the next scene with the kids talking about how they can't wait to see dad for Christmas. Yeah. You know? And being like Oh, we're going to Uncle Digby's house and dad's gonna be there for Christmas and stuff and it's like, oh, fuck man. And then, and then Claire herself, sorry, outmumbered herself, mm. being like, "Yeah, he'll be there." Yeah, you know. Yeah, riddle. It's that. <clears throat> it's that horrible thing, like, because it's a parent. They they get into this a little bit later, but like, the, you mm. can't crush your kids just before Christmas like that. Like, well, we'll get into the reasonings and stuff a little bit. Yeah, in a little bit, but but yeah, it's uh, it's a difficult thing to deal with. I'm sure. Mm. Like, you you can't. I don't think you can necessarily blame. Uh, for it really not at all you if anything it's just, your heart bleeds for her right because you're just yeah you're, you're looking at her going like the kids are behind her over her yeah. shoulder being like can't wait for daddy to come back for christmas and she's just dead eyed it's so upset it's horrible and you know that like every time they're saying that her heart is just breaking a little bit mm. more as well it's it's the it's uh, the, the ignorance it's is bliss for the kids but she knows everything oh, yeah. so she sat there like oh god yeah yeah yeah, a hundred percent. It's brutal. It is brutal. Uh, but yes, yeah, so they are going to to Uncle Digby's house for Christmas, um, which it's is fucking a, well a big off Uncle Digby, a big posh house in the countryside. Indeed, I wonder if we'll ever see this house again. Oh, okay. <laughs> but but like also in story though as well. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. So. All I'm saying is remember this house is Uncle Digby's house, okay? Okay, Uncle Digby. That's all I'm saying, Lawrence. Who we never meet, right? Uncle Digby. Who we never meet, okay? I, I like it's to little... think that Uncle Digby is... And we also may never meet Uncle Digby, but that's just, this is, that's just a little tease for you, Lawrence. Okay? So Mr. Smith is Armstrong. Don't fucking worry about it. I'm not right? <laughs> Mr. Smith don't is Armstrong. I like to imagine that Uncle Digby, whom we don't see, is Miller. Okay. From the popular comedy group Armstrong and Miller. I know. Yeah, they do that popular pilot sketch that everyone For fuck's knows. sake. I hate <laughs> you so much. <laughs> um, so, yeah, they, they go over there. Um, the, the the little boy, the telescope nerd, he says that the ghost of uh, <laughs> Uncle Digby has locked them out of the big house. But Uncle Digby is still very much alive, as, uh, <laughs> yeah. as his sister points out. <laughs> I do I do like the bit where they're like, why are we here? I, I, you know, I, why do we have to come here? And like, because of the bombing. And he's like, I like the bombs. <laughs> it's exciting. Outmumbered. Like Take me home to the Blitz. <laughs> outmumbered. Uh, do you like outnumbered? I love outnumbered. It's I, great. It's one of them things I've, I've only ever seen it in passing. Like I've seen loads of it, but in bits and pieces at random people's houses. It's coming back for a special this year. And oh, I like then fun. saw like a clip of like the kids and they're all just like fully adults now and I'm like, I fucking hate that. I cannot tell you how much I hate that. But they could do they could do it that the outnumbered kids have kids now. Or are they not that old? <laughs> well not that old. Oh. Well no, like the oldest one is probably. But yeah. like 
<laughs> but like the the one who's a little boy, he has a, like a full beard now. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, I hate that. I hate that so much. <laughs> he was a little boy, okay? <laughs> He was a little rascal. You can't grow right? up. You have to stay the age you are in my head. It's yeah. not fair. It's like when you see um, Haley Joel Osment in random little cameos when he pops up. He was in The Boys, and he's just like a 40-year-old man, and I'm like, this isn't fair. Who was he in The Boys? He's um, he's the guy that gives Homelander a phone or something. He's like literally in it for like one scene. What season is that? I want to say season two. I won't remember that. Yeah. Years ago. Years ago. Um. All right. Cool. Well, good. But Haley Joel Osment, he's got the same face, though. He has the exact same face now <laughs> as he did when he was a little boy. Just slightly wider and hairier, basically. Yeah, it's yeah. a little wider and a little more creased and stuff, but it's the same face. Yeah, you know? that is fair. It's like when people are like, oh my God, can you believe how old Macaulay Culkin is? Kind of, <laughs> yeah. It's been 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> He yeah. didn't make Home Alone yesterday, all right? It che checks out, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I saw I saw a fucking TikTok yesterday that was it was the caption was "This is so heartbreaking," and it was like a slide one, so it's just basically two pictures that you slide back and forth. And the first picture was the three Top Gear presenters, so Jeremy Clarkson. Richard Hammond and James May in like 2002. Yeah. And it said, and it just said 2002. And then the next one was a picture of the same three blokes in 2024. Okay. Yeah. Just looking older. That's the whole thing. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> and it was like set to sad music. And it was like, this is heartbreak. And I was like, what? The fucking passage of time? <laughs> it's been 22 fucking years, my guy. Yeah, they're going to be older. That's just how it goes. I, <laughs> I also like to imagine that as like 2002 to 2024, right? Really, the only thing that's dramatically changed in these three men's lives is they're all dramatically richer. <laughs> so much richer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And they were doing all right in 2002. But yeah. Now they've all got Amazon deals. Right? They've they got yeah, Bezos exactly. money right now. I don't think Hammond does an Amazon deal. Is he not on the... Oh, well, he, well, he, he will have done with the Grand Tour, I guess. Yeah. yeah. He's not got the farm and all of that nonsense and James May's Or James May or cooks some cheese or whatever. Does he cook cheese? He does a, Doesn't he do a cooking show or I something? Th I thought he had a I'm Building My Own Pub show. Wasn't that Jeremy Clarkson? No, he's building a pub on his farm. Because, God, <laughs> these men won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Bezos is in an office going, but what's Richard Hammond doing? They're going to start making great content for us to watch, which we all watch and love. I'd like Clarkson's Farm. It's a good show. All right. Good. Good for you. Well done. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a man of the people. <laughs> all right. Okay. <laughs> anyway, enough about your favourite show, Top Gear. Thank all you. Right? Yep. <laughs> Where was we? <laughs> so, I love that. Interrupt me and then throw me <laughs> under the bus, why don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Where was we? Uh, so suddenly the door. It doesn't. I just put it gets broken down. It doesn't really get broken down. It kind of just gets flolloped. It just off. completely comes off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, it just completely falls off. Um, and doesn't he say it's developed a fault or something? Which which is a, a bit of a recurring gag. He says, but is it? Did he say that? Oh, in the episode. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 yes, yes. Um, I do like. Yeah. So it's the doctor. He asks them. He goes, "Can I take <laughs> your cases? Oh, but you're going to need to carry them over here, actually." <laughs> yeah. He goes, "May I take your cases?" And then they all just drop them. And he goes, "Lovely. Uh, would you mind just carrying them for me? I need to show you around the home, which is." <laughs> It's like it's he, um, good stuff. It's like he read a book on being like a host five minutes before this, and he's trying to wing <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, he uh, he introduces himself as the caretaker, mm. which uh, which I enjoy quite a lot. Um, I like I like the idea of a doctor going by different personas now and again. Mm. You know, the caretaker is one that comes back, and it does come up a few times, which I which I quite enjoy. He's also uh, gone by the professor at times. Uh, Ace called him the professor. Oh yes, yes, was, I remember um, that. When he was Sylvester McCoy for a little while. I don't know why, but yeah. Uh the well the John Smith moniker, obviously. Well, no, that but but the something, you know? Oh like a title. A title. I yes, see, yes, a I title. See. A different title. Yeah, yeah. Uh usually called the Doctor or the Caretaker. Or get off this planet. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> that last one's not really a name though. <laughs> Um, yeah. I, I I quite like this because obviously um, Outmumbered is there too, but they never saw each other's faces. It's quite an interesting no, no, dynamic no. there. Yeah, yeah. 
and she spoiler alert, doesn't realize until the very end of the episode. Yeah, but, which you and I, I like. Yeah. I, I like that there is a quite a good performance in this because it's it's quite a crowded episode with a lot going on. Mm. But yeah, I quite like that there is this subtle change because in in the opening pre Sting, it was so whimsical and oh, I'm just gonna nip out with a neighbor's car, help this weird spaceman. Like it, I was posting the what? I was posting. Oh, post. Did I say pre Sting? You did. I'm a yeah. fool. Um, but no, but it, it is super whimsical and like very down to earth <clears> and nice and 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 now it's just kind of oh this man's irritating me <laughs> yeah. straight away, <laughs> but with good reason. But we we will get into that. Um, yeah, so the doctor's giving them the tour of mm. the the home of Uncle Digby's home. Uh, he takes them into the sitting room uh, where it's all a bit boring and standard. So he made some changes. <laughs> He's uh, made the chairs all move around in a very fun way. <laughs> the exhibit. <laughs> <Which is great. laughs> sure, yes. Uh, he takes them through to the kitchen, which now has a lemonade. So yeah, good bit of fun. I like that. Uh, the stairs have broken down. I love haze. that. That was that threw me <laughs> off so much. It was so it was so funny. <laughs> And so they just have to walk up and just be regular stairs. That that is, that is a good like, I guess a budget saving gag in yeah. a sense. But or just like not even not really because it's just like, let's make this thing be a normal thing. Yeah, and that's the joke. But kind it, of, it's an idea know? out of literally nothing. Yeah, it's the yeah. idea of what if the concept of stairs was funny <laughs> somehow. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a, there's a few other things he's got the um, I, I do like that after all of that these, they, there's his mum's more uh, boring bedroom <laughs> <laughs> nothing yeah. different about it whatsoever <laughs> uh, there's also panthers in the attic yeah he says tells them to stay clear of that uh, then they get to Lily and Cyril's bedroom which is decked out with and I have this verbatim. Oh, so please, bear with, please. <laughs> just bear with me for Oh, he's second. back and he's yeah. got his notes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's decked out with toys, a science y and workbench, a jungle, a window disguised as a mirror, a mirror disguised as a window, a selection of torches for midnight feasts and secret reading, Zen garden, mysterious cupboard, zone of tranquility, rubber wall, dream tank, <laughs> exact model of the rest of the house, not quite to scale, which he does apologize for. Yep. Uh, dolls with comical expressions. The Magna Carta for some fucking reason. <laughs> um, a foot spa, Cluedo, a yellow fort, but no beds because he put, he couldn't fit them in. Uh, so instead, he dropped some hammocks from the ceiling. I have you ever slept in a hammock? <laughs> no, more out of fear than anything else because <laughs> I don't think a hammock could support me. And I would just wake up on the floor in the middle of the night. <laughs> How'd I get here? Oh. How'd I get here? Yeah. I've done I've only done one when I was a little kid. They um my mum put a, a hammock in my garden. Um, between, okay. between two in, in your castle yeah no right <laughs> on the grounds was it in the grounds in the in the manor green <laughs> she had a star she had the staff <laughs> hammock in the grounds fuck's <laughs> sake <laughs> um but yeah no it was um it was fun i like that he, he this is the developed a fault joke coming back he, he, he yes. kind of jumps head first into it i think from the angle, I can't really tell, but it looks like he just jumps in between the middle of both it of does. them. Yeah, he just a hundred percent jumps straight in between the middle of them, <laughs> and just obviously falls to the floor right between them, uh, coming up and saying it seems to have developed a fault, mm, which is the, fun. The fault is you didn't land it. Yeah, <laughs> that's the fucking fault. Um, uh, yeah, so he's he's basically stimming off the walls during all of this, mm. like at a hundred and fifty percent, getting very excited as as he does, and just being incredibly ridiculous. Uh, but for all of this, you can see Madge just getting more and more irritated yeah. out of it, um, and eventually she just snaps when he launches himself at the hammock and then shouts at the children to head downstairs mm. as well. I see. I fucking I love this scene because you get one <clears> of these um, the classic Matt Smith kind of immediate bounce backs like he's just like you say literally stimming off the walls and he immediately mm. drops his expression and he goes straight back down to solemn because she 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 outmumbered comes out with it straight away and it's like their father's dead mm. and he's like oh i'm really sorry to hear that and it's just straight away you're like i believe that that 180 switch on that man is crazy but um and, uh, you and what i like is like he's not 
he's not trying to sweeten the moment, mm. you know? He like he's he's not trying to help her or anything. He's not trying to like say, Oh, everything's gonna be okay. Because it's not. Yeah. You know? Because I've got it's, hammers it's fucked. <laughs> yeah. He's he's not trying to like comfort her or uh, well, comfort's probably not the right words, but he's he's not trying to make it better because he yeah. knows that this is something you can't necessarily make better. Okay, he's um he does he goes from ridiculous, insane, wacky clown to comforting Susan to comforting soothing presence in a heartbeat. Yeah, really, which is really impressive to see and oh, some beautiful lines here, some really well written lines. Um. First of all, just she asks him why he's doing this, and he just says, "I'm just trying to take care of things. I'm the caretaker." Mm. And she says, "That's not what caretakers do." And then the doctor says, "Then why are they called caretakers?" Which is ridiculous and beautiful all at the same time. Yeah. And it's it's something that I think Moffat does quite well, which is like applying such beauty and magic to the everyday and ordinary. Which really, I think which it, is, it's such a talent that he's able to come at it from obviously the doctor but more case the writer is able to like you say it's an everyday thing people know what caretakers do but in when you break it down a caretaker this is how an outside perspective would see it someone that takes care of yeah people. yeah like 100 percent. it's i i i just love the fact that it goes from all of the toys all of the toys that any child could want to then sage old wisdom it's that flip on a dime kind of thing that we're used to with him where he goes from a kid to the oldest man you've ever seen. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. And it's so well done. She does tell him that she hasn't told the children yet because she basically doesn't want them to associate Christmas with the death of their dad, mm. which fair enough, mate, because brutal. All right. Yeah. That's fuck you for brutal. life kind of situation. A hundred percent. Yeah. That, that would completely ruin your fucking Christmases forever, mm. basically. Every Christmas is just going to be a reminder of your dad's death, basically. So, yeah, completely fair enough. And then she just, like, kind of, like, frustratingly sighs, like, she just doesn't know why she keeps shouting at them. And then, oh, my God, um, the doctor just says, because every time you see them happy, you remember how sad they're going to be, and it breaks your heart. Mm. Because what's the point of them being happy now if they're just going to be sad later? The answer, of course, is because they're going to be sad later. It's so simple, right? But like, oh, oh my god, what an amazing line! You know what? <laughs> just such a beautiful and just so like it's one of those lines that when you hear it, you're like. Well, of course, yeah, yeah. Of, fuck, of course, that makes hundred percent perfect sense, and it's just so. First of all, perfectly summed up, perfectly, uh, beautifully written, and beautifully delivered from a beautiful man. Mm. Well, I'm gonna kiss. <laughs> wow, <laughs> <laughs> high praise. <laughs> Count with us, uh, <laughs> listeners at home. This is the first time I cried in the episode. Not the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same. Although I think I I did shed a tear when. Uh, Reg went down and, and Aunt Mumbert woke up. Nah, fuck him. He knows what so. he did. He <laughs> tried to move the moon. <laughs> did he? Yeah, he kidnapped Clyde. Okay. Well, this is all... I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> um, so the Doctor's got all sorts of presents in the living room, or sitting room, as he calls it. The um, he's <laughs> He's laid down a tree... Right, and they the kids yes. look in awe of this tree. So, isn't it just the best Christmas tree you've ever seen? And maybe I start have started to agree with you about how cynical I can be, because I happen to notice that on this tree there were <laughs> ornaments of rotating planes heading downwards. Ah, oh, Lawrence! And I just went, I just went, <laughs> oh dear. You are a cynical man. <laughs> um, but they, they get they get out Mumba to say what she always says every Christmas. This Christmas will be the best one ever. And it's lovely. Well, I think you're first of all, you've skipped over something, Lauren. So yes, we will go back <gasps> okay. to the fact that there is a certain present under the tree. Mm. It's a big blue beautiful box. It's is this the glowing one? The one that's making creepy noises. It was literally the only fucking present under the tree. Is it yeah. the only one? There's only one, yeah. There's just this big one. Oh, why do I think there was more? Because you're an idiot. I thought her name was more as well. So you're <laughs> too focused on the planes going down. Yeah. Right. So you're I'm trying to make morbid on. jokes. Exactly. <laughs> How can I make this funny on my podcast <laughs> where I'm cynical? 
<laughs> You've caught me. Guilty as yes. charged. <laughs> there you go. Um, but yeah, so there's a big old present. Um, it's kind of, it's not, is there like whispering coming from it? it it's got like a kind of... A... There, it glows. It glows a little bit later. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, anyway, off to bed, everyone goes. We kind of cut forward. So, so, so yeah, so going back to what you were saying, yes, Aunt Mumbird says, uh, yeah, this Christmas is going to be the best Christmas ever, which is kind of like, it's a little tradition they have, mm. I guess, because like Cyril's like, I'll oh, say the thing you always say, Mum, and then she like... She what what's heartbreaking about this is she gives them a hug, but then like there's just this awful look on her face as she does like yeah, fuck she's she's just digging herself even deeper at this point because she just kind of has to I guess. Well, you've committed yeah. to it, right? Like yeah, the fuck yeah, you're supposed to do <laughs> yeah, that, and then, yeah, like she she can't not do her little traditions and mm. not say it's gonna be the best Christmas ever because. Then they'll be like, well, why aren't you saying that? Why, why when isn't it going to be the best Christmas ever? Is it because father's dead? Yeah, she, should, she should hold them close, cross <laughs> her fingers and go, this is going to be the best Christmas ever your dad's dead. <laughs> See if she can get away with it like that. This is going to be the best Christmas ever. We're going to have a beautiful dinner. Your dad's dead. There's going to be some sweet treats. It's going to be amazing, you know? <laughs> Just slip it in there. They'll never know. She's not as tactile as we are. No, we, we'd true. be way better parents. Yes, I have lost my place in my notes. <laughs> uh, they, they, well, they're all asleep. <clears throat> well, they they are sort of asleep, but little. No uh, one's asleep. No, well, telescope nerd is is bothering his sister. He's like, oi. Yes. What do you think that present is down there? She's like, shut. Seems like bitch. a big house for them to be sharing a room, doesn't it? Yeah, but it's the fun room, isn't it? The doctor only spent time in the fun yeah. room because it it did true. make me laugh that he said this is Cyril's room and we never saw Lily's room, so I guess he just like he got too he carried away. Cyril and Lily's room. Does he say, and Lily's room? We're going to the tape. Oh, no. There we go. We're back from the tape. What did he say, Lawrence? Uh, I didn't hear. I've gone dead. <laughs> He's, well, let me repeat it for you. He said Lily and Cyril's room. I can't hear okay. you. I'm deaf. All right, well, that's the podcast over then, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what's being said. <laughs> All right, I'm wrong. Fine, I'm wrong. Okay, I'm wrong again. Yes, you, you, had a, you had enough of me being wrong this episode? No, and I never will. Damn. Um, all right, so everyone's waking up uh, to the sound of the sonic screwdriver going off, and they all kind of pop outside and have a little look about. I, I do like that uh, there's a certain point in the episode where everyone's awake, but everyone is still creeping around because they don't know that everyone's awake, and it's very fun. Cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. That's great. I love that. It's very fun. What did I say um, then if you loved it? I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, everyone's in bed. This is all a bit like... Nah, I don't think much of this is needed, really. Really. Until we... Should we just skip forward to Narnia? Uh, yeah, because it's... It, this is where you feel they stretched out the runtime. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie. As much as I love this episode, I do think it drags a little bit in the middle. Yeah. I do think it... it, it like, beginning and end, great. And, like... Most of the episode, great, but I think it does drag a little bit in the middle here. But anyway, so the box, the big blue box is a present, okay, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and that present is uh, Narnia, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's called the Doctor, the Widow, and the Wardrobe for a reason. Much like A Christmas Carol was inspired by Charles Dickens. Is it Charles Dickens? It is Charles Dickens' yeah. A Christmas Carol, who started last week's episode. Um this is obviously inspired by C.S. Lewis's um, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Where would you, just side point quickly, where would you rank this in terms of Christmas episodes of Doctor Who? Like up the top? Or? Number, okay. So in terms of what we have so far? Yes, yeah. So out of the six we've had so far? Probably, yeah. Christmas Invasion. Um, Runaway, Runaway Bride. Bride. Voyage of the Damned. Um, Voyage of the Damned. Um, the the next generation doctor, two boring. Uh, no, the next doctor. Boring. Oh yes, sorry, yes. Yes. You see, you yeah. forget. Oh, I thought about yeah, it is boring, yeah. Yes. Does the end of time part one the end of time counts as one, doesn't it? Obviously. Yeah. It's yeah, one yeah. story. Yeah, yeah. The end of time. Uh, obviously that was last. Um <laughs> the <laughs> um the uh, Christmas Carol and this. This is seven. This is this is seven. Wow, okay. Okay, yeah. So, I would say this is... Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. My trouble is, okay, 
everything before Matt Smith came along is in the bin, basically. And then Give I'm off. having trouble. I'm having trouble trying to figure out either Christmas Carol or this one is my number one so far. And I don't know because honestly, I love them both. I think this, they're both such beautiful episodes for different reasons. I think he's going. Although I will say um, Christmas Carol is a little bit tainted for me purely because now I can only think of um, the. Um, when Kate sent us that meme and it just said oh, nonce no. over the picture of Abigail. And did you see Kate went to um, the proms as well? <laughs> and she filmed a video where they played that song and she had that up on her phone. I didn't see it. Did, wait, is this on Twitter? It was on the Discord, I think. Oh my God, I didn't see that. Join the Discord, everyone. I need to find that video. That sounds hilarious. It was, it was hilarious. It made me laugh quite a lot. I'm I'm going if I'm doing top three I'm doing Christmas Carol Voyage of the Damned and this Voyage of the Damned is good all right mm. but but none you you would know that none of them are as none of the RTD ones are as good as the the Moffat they're ones not as are. Christmassy or as good I no I'm, I think Voyage of the Damned has earned its number two spot for me it's not Christmassy I don't care it's good it should be, it should be Christmassy. it is Christmas Lawrence. they go down they teleport down to Christmas for a There's second no and they go Christmas fucking Christmas in that episode. There's no Christmas in that episode apart from there's little angels and and his name is Max. No, they tell I don't know what that has to do with Christmas. They teleport next to Bernard Cribbins and he goes, well, hey, Christmas! <laughs> and yeah. then they leave very quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right, sure. Yeah. <laughs> So I'd say it was quite lucky that in the scripts they do they didn't have Bernard Cribbin say, By the way, I don't have any family. <laughs> it really is, isn't it? <laughs> I don't have any family or a granddaughter, and I'll never be back. So leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> nah, good on him. Rest good, in peace. Good on him. In peace. Oh, R.I.P. Bernard Cribbins, one of the greats. R.I.P. to a real one, one of the best to ever do it. Also, and also, uh, a congratulations to Karen Gillan. Mm, yeah, crazy news. She she is with child. After we've just wrapped up that story, we could have banged some SEO. Thanks a lot, Karen Gillan. Insert joke about River something here. Yeah. You know? And that show Love. where she's, I don't know. What, what's Stephen Moffat doing with that cancelled show? <laughs> uh, Douglas is cancelled. Have you seen it yet? No, I haven't. It's on the list, but I'm kind of waiting until we're done with Amy and Rory. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, don't want it swaying my opinions. Anyway, what's going on? Narnia. Uh, there's a box. There's a box in a room, and in that room there's a whole fucking planet, which is Narnia. Mm -hmm. Um, So Cyril goes into the box, um, and I don't, yeah, I don't know what else to say apart from that it's basically just fucking Narnia. Well, it, is, really. it is just fucking Narnia, right? It's, it's Narnia. Save yeah. James McAvoy and an ice queen or whatever. like And a lion. And a lion. And a witch. And a witch. And a wardrobe, to be fair. Well, I guess it's nothing like it then, really. There's, well... The TARDIS is the wardrobe. See, isn't isn't it strange that they have this concept of like, oh, there's a there's a box which transports you to another magical world, and it's not the TARDIS. Yeah, it is fucking it's, odd. It, yeah. it is. Doesn't it seem strange? I guess because they want like the instant Narnia thing, not like, mm. oh, you walk into the console room and then the Doctor pulls a big lever and then you go to birth. Yeah, no, but like, I guess they wanted like birth. exhibit. The Doctor could have pimped out the TARDIS, right? So like the, he had a setting on it that was like. A Narnia <laughs> setting or something. Yeah, yeah. It, it does seem strange, mm. doesn't it? Yeah. And then you've like, later on, he does calls call the, TARDIS the TARDIS the wardrobe. And it's like, yes. yeah. He does say it's his wardrobe, so they do get it in there, but. It doesn't yeah. serve the function Odd. of the wardrobe in the story, though, does it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it just it could have been a little bit more magical. But then you would have, like, Doctor Who nerds being like, um, actually. Um, it's actually not a wardrobe. Stands for time and relative dimension in like space. <laughs> I think you'll find, actually. Let's say, hypothetically, that I have a uh, time and a relative dimension in space. It always comes back to the <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, go buy a single piece of wood to support America. Yeah, I know. God, he loves his cobbler or whatever it's called. <laughs> cobbler? What's he call it? What's it cobbler? He calls it his cob. That's either a pie or a man who makes shoes. No, he calls okay? it, he says a cob or something. He says something like a cob. <laughs> All right. I'm not wrong on this. I think you might be. Fuck off. <laughs> You're wrong. That was said very confidently for a man who is wrong about most <laughs> things, okay? And yet, Nathan, there is egg on your face. Because I'm right. And here is the proof. All right, as you can see, I just went shopping at Home Depot. You should do the same. This wood, this board, this magnificent piece of poplar is now mine. <laughs> 
moving on, Nathan. We don't have time for this. All right, we're going to move. <laughs> anyway, on. the tree grows a bauble, Lawrence. I don't know if you saw this. I did. I'm also trying to see my notes. Bear with me. Good. Okay. Oh, oh so the yes. tree grows a bra- a bauble, which which uh, glows. Uh, sorry, which grows and grows until it hatches like an egg. Uh, this gives little Cyril a fright. Bless mm. him. So he runs back into the box, uh, and as he does, whatever was inside the little egg bauble runs away. Basically, there's little footprints. Little footprints. I wonder if that will be relevant to the rest of the plot. I mean, it probably will. It'd be weird if it was never brought up again. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, don't know what that was. Don't know what that weird criminal <laughs> I unleashed was. <laughs> anyway, enough about that. Let's let's go find that fucking lion. I I do like that the um, say so like in and amongst all of this, the doctor keeps going like, "Are we sure that Cyril's in his bed?" And he finally goes to check in his mm-hmm. bedroom, and he's he's just done the old Teddy under the uh, under the duvet trick, and he's like it's sort of impressed, and then immediately remembers he needs to be worried. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, oh, this man knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, that classic. <laughs> what was he dealing with a professional here? <laughs> yeah. um, so, yeah, the doctor dives into <clears throat> Narnia. He pulls Lily along with him. Um, yes. I, I do quite like that. Again, it feels weird that this isn't the TARDIS because you even get Lily gets a moment to have a kind of companion TARDIS moment where she walks in and yeah. she's like, it's which doesn't say it, but it's the it's the bigger on the inside scene. It's basically. bigger on the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but they're not inside; they're outside. They are outside. So it's bigger on the outside. This outside is different from the inside I was just in, and it's Narnia. That's what... Shut up. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> so they they go to Narnia. Um, I tell you what, it's it's nice. They're like in the the Doctor Who Christmas episode that the companions are children because it just. Yeah. Uh, it feels right, doesn't it? It's like very obviously family friendly Christmas themed show. It's nice to that there are some some kids there to go along on the adventure. Really, it was and Matt Smith works well with children. Yeah, like he really a, does. Yeah, he he's got a great sense of like he because he can do that like wonderful childlike wonder whilst also breaking your heart with that like deep beautiful lines about grief and loss and all that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, so, I would say out yeah. of the doctors that we've seen so far, he is the most proficient at giving us Doctor Who magic and that mostly does come from like kids being in Doctor Who a lot of Doctor Who yeah. magic of course it, le- it naturally lends itself to that sort of stuff yeah so, but they obviously they figured yeah. out its strengths and they I, I think it's oh, 100% it's also kind of nice you know mm-hmm. bench bench the companions for a bit let him just see what he gets up to mm-hmm. when he's not with his mates yeah yeah 100% uh, because his mates think he's dead yes uh, <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, so the doctor says sorry I was going to say there's a really fun moment where Lily goes like it's like fairyland and the doctor goes fairyland and then like like as in like wow you're so dumb that's ridiculous (laughs) then he goes fairyland looks completely different anyway (laughs) just moves on that's a classic it's a classic it's good stuff uh, he says that Cyril is about 20 minutes ahead of them, mm. even though they like literally just saw him climb through the box, but time moves differently, whatever. Yeah, it's Narnia. Just plot nonsense, that's fine. I I haven't seen Narnia in years, all right? Mm. And I barely remember it. But doesn't like Narnia end with them, like, haven't they lived like a full life, like decades, and they're like fully grown adults and like very old people at the end? And then they walk back through the wardrobe and then they're back to like 12 year olds or something? I want to say that you're right, but I also haven't seen it in many, many years. Because that would cause some, like, severe trauma. Yeah. Like, I'm a little boy. You've lived a whole life, and now you're just a little boy again? <laughs> this nine-year-old comes out and he's like, my taxes. <laughs> no. <laughs> my wife. My wife. <laughs> what happened to my wife and kids? Am I allowed to I'm have kids? I'm a little kids? boy. <laughs> I lived a full life. I enjoyed alcohol. I, I had I had children by the plenty. <laughs> by the plenty. <laughs> okay. There was a fucking lion. He was my mate. <laughs> there was a lion. He had the voice of Liam Neeson. <laughs> there was a beaver. I'm pretty sure Santa Claus showed up at one point. That all happened, <laughs> didn't it? Did he? I think so. I think Santa Claus was there. Or at least a version of Santa Claus. Oh, Unless maybe. I'm thinking of something he, else. He might be one of the side characters that the witch just murders or something. Like, death no, to there was a Santa Claus. I'm sh- I haven't seen this film in like fucking 20 years or something. Mm. But I'm sure there was a Santa Claus. It was like, oh, I'm Santa Claus and I I drive this sleigh. Is, that, is, this, is this the same franchise, I'm almost certain, where the guy that played um, 
the the scarred up guy in the Punisher. He's a little prince boy. Yeah, uh, that's the sequel, Prince Caspian, or maybe a, the threequel. I don't know. Prince um, Caspian. Y- it is, yes, but I haven't seen that. Okay. Anyway, enough about Narnia and nonsense and James McAvoy having a little goatee. Oh, yeah, James McAvoy. He's got little legs, hasn't he? He's yeah. got little goat he's legs. He's got no dick. <laughs> all right, weird thing to focus on. But all right. He hasn't got a dick. All right, Unless it's a horse. His shirt. But also, isn't he shirtless, but then he's got a scarf? Yeah, he's chilly, about? man. <laughs> we'll put a coat on then, you prick. Right. <laughs> and tell me clothes don't exist in this universe. I know they do. Yeah. Fucking shave your lion, mate. Put him on. Yeah. There's <laughs> that little boy who sells out his whole family for a, a, a little bit of Turkish delight. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a relatable king. <laughs> anyway. Oh God, we're going to get so many sidetracking with Narnia. I love a Turkish delight. Do you like a Turkish delight? I love delight? a Turkish delight, man. I love it. Too. Everyone's like, uh, worst thing I'm like, oh. No, I love it. Yeah, man. are you stupid? Beautiful. It's gooey and nice in the middle. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about like the chocolate Turkish delight. Here. Yeah, yeah. So am I. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah, a classic beautiful. Cadbury's, but I also like yeah, a yeah, traditional Turkish Cadbury's, delight with yeah. the powder as well. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah. But that's like a that's like a, a, a rare treat. That's not something you find in like every day. Yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just picturing you. You've ordered your chocolate orange delight. Oh, maybe I'll get some <laughs> Turkish delight instead. No, this is just regular delight. <laughs> no, there's nothing. But I wanted the Turkish version. <laughs> there's nothing Turkish about this. <laughs> Oh, my day is ruined. Oh. My rage is immeasurable. Sorry about that. Um, my chocolate is not orange. So Lily doesn't understand. She's like, trees, trees. A tree grows mm. its own decoration in front of her, and she's like, "Fucking, this is nuts, mate. This is pretty nuts." Mm. Um, she is from the forties as well, so like, she doesn't even know what an app is. Oh, that's true. Yeah, she doesn't. This know must what rock her is. fucking world. Yeah, she doesn't know what she, she doesn't know what she's missing out on. She's missing out on like. I don't know, Troy Savan hitting the gritty. <laughs> Is that what happens? <laughs> I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I was thinking more rudimentary. She's missing out on that that old app, like the first app, where you can have a pint on your phone, and when you tilt your phone, <laughs> you drink at the pint. <laughs> okay. And you go, look sure. at me, or, or, or you have a gun, and you just press it, and it fires. Yeah. 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 Or you pretend to shave someone's head. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's always a classic. Yeah. Apps are so much shit, there, aren't they? Like, I want those apps. Like, I don't need online banking. I think you can still get them. <laughs> you can still, you can still download the beer drinking app. Okay, it's gonna be the only app I download. I'm gonna delete all my other apps and just go, <laughs> go old school. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. Anyway, we should probably talk about some more Doctor Who at some point. We really should. These episodes get long. Anyway, um, what's happening? So there's there's footprints. The footprints are getting bigger. Whatever. Who cares? Mm. Um, <laughs> hey, uh, a certified banger. <laughs> whatever. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> certified banger. Just ignore the middle bit of drugs. Mm. And it's fine. Yeah. Um, so the, the there's a bit of a cool moment where like the the doctor and Lily they're like walking through the forest and he's like, oh the trees are quite active. I can or there's there's like a lot of winds going on, but then there isn't though. That's the thing. Mm. Um, the doctor says, you know the difference between wind and trees talking to each other. There is no wind. Ho ho ho. Oh, well done. Be a sizzle. Um, I like I like all the tree stuff in this. Right, I like it. Yeah, we, it's cool. We kind of this is the point in the episode where we start just cutting back and forth between various stories. Um, yeah, 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 various yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So um, Cyril has found his way over to a um, big old tower, basically. Big old tower. Yeah, yeah, and he's following these footsteps. Anyway, he kind of he knocks on the door. He goes inside, and there's just a big tree statue man. And I tell you what, this looks cool as fuck. This tree statue mm. looks so sick. Yeah, yeah. Just a big, just a big tree man on a big wooden throne mm. sort of thing, just sat there. Even when they get him moving about, like it feels. Like it, it feels sturdy and it feels good. Like it, spider alert, it moves about. It does move about, yeah. But he, no, because right at the end of it, he's like, "Whoa, that's a big tree, man." And then he fucks off, and then the tree does a little blink. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, mm-hmm. he does. Yeah, yeah. Good on him. Tree. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, so Cyril, yeah, he goes up to the tower or whatever. So Madge, um, oh, sorry, I'm numbered has yes. has worked out. There's no kids in the house. Yeah. Everything's gone pee tong. She's gone looking for them. She's crawled through the box into Narnia. Um, she has the good sense to put on a coat, so good for her. Yeah, uh, it's a little bit chilly in there. 
Um, and then she goes off looking for the kids. Doctor and Lily, obviously, uh, coming up behind Cyril. They're following the footprints, uh, which are getting bigger. Did I say that? Yes. I think I said that. They're getting bigger, anyway. Because um, they're the man. They're the wooden man. Yeah. Um, and then and then uh, my next note, I'm not sure if I've just jumped ahead massively, but my next note is Madge runs into some big kind of 8080 leg uh, and then is greeted by three yellow stormtroopers, one of whom is Bill Bailey. This is so strange. I've also put yellow stormtroopers. <laughs> <laughs> they do kind of look like stormtroopers, they do, don't they? They do, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I don't think you've, you've done ahead too much. There, there is only one line that you'd skipped over, which was quite funny, where the, there is a ground tremor, which is obviously caused by the big 8080 leg thing. Yeah. Um, and then just before that, the doctor's like, Oh, there's nothing going on here. Nothing dangerous. This is all good. All good stuff. Mm. Everything's under control. And then the ground shakes, and he goes, "Oh, there are some sentences I just should, I should just stay away from." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good stuff. That, that is good fun. fun. Um, I like that. Yeah. So Bill Bailey's here. I like Bill Bailey. I could watch a spin-off of these three unsure little <laughs> people because they're so I was fun. Sure. Oh wow! I was sure you'd hate these. Things. No, I love them, man. They're they're oh, brilliant. Wow. Maybe you are softening in your age <laughs> as you get older. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I love how it's such a commitment to the bit, isn't it? The Bill Bailey's there, yeah. like, right, everyone, get your guns up, and they're like, oh, yeah, just, like the optics, mate. Like, she's a crying mother. Yeah, like, oh, mother. Let's, just, let's have a minute to think about this. Yeah, yeah. And then the other guy I, just I bursts into love... tears. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he's got like mummy issues or whatever, <laughs> and then and then she goes, "I'm putting down my weapon because I respect her as a woman." She says, <laughs> <laughs> and then they're like, "All right, all right, we'll put down our weapon. Stop crying. Are you okay?" And then she just immediately pulls a gun out on them. Incredible, incredible, great work. switch up. So good. There's so many little bits about this little sequence that I love. I love the fact that the. Uh, the guy who is like uncontrollably crying because he has kind of mummy issues. Like yeah. he pulls himself together, and the second he does, he just fucking cranks his gun. He's like, "I can do. Should, should you want me to shoot her? I can shoot her now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm back." And the other, yeah, the other one stuff. is the. Um, for a moment, obviously, it is a big ruse, and she does use the opportunity <clears> to get the upper hand. But I, I really like that out mum, but just reacts in the way that most people would, which is like, you've just walked into fucking Narnia. You have no idea where your kids are. And suddenly Bill Bailey is a yellow stormtrooper's in your face. And she just starts going, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it just breaks down yeah. crying. It is very relatable. It is, yeah. right? Like, I wouldn't blame just her if completely... this wasn't a ruse. <laughs> yeah, just complete. Well, I don't think it was a ruse at first. I think she was yeah. genuinely just overwhelmed by, like, everything going on. <laughs> and it's 100% fair. And um, their, their senses, like, confuse <laughs> sidearms with, like, wool and cardigans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ridiculous uh yeah they are they are very funny that's right uh, bill bailey is obviously hilarious uh mm. very funny guy maybe uh, slightly wasted like it's a great appearance yeah yeah probably yeah, yeah quite quite a short little snippet you can bring him back you can bring anyone back yeah. but didn't they have anthony not was it An no not anthony head anthony head's already been in it anthony head was in your favorite episode don't worry my joke doesn't work i was gonna i was confusing him with greg davies and i was gonna say they had anthony head as a big head <sighs> No, they had Greg Davis as a big head. Yeah, which is not nearly as funny as Anthony Head as a big head. No. He's no. better as a cool bat. School reunion's the blueprint. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's not that good, man. It's really so not that good. good. Goated episode, though. <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> Lawrence loves when women are pitted against each other. No, I don't like that <laughs> bit. All right, I like all the other cool bits. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Like all the bullying that Mickey receives. Yeah. I was trying to think of some other problematic <laughs> stuff to point out, but I just couldn't. Um, uh. I So this is fun. We get a... Um, no, we don't. I'm reading the wrong note. Um, ha ha, you fool. I'll tell you what we get. We get Cyril at the top of the tower. He finds another wooden door and a wooden woman inside. Uh, this time... Uh, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, just as the Doctor and Lily get to the tower as well. Uh, the doctor says the big wooden man was hatched out of the little bauble egg, which we kind of already know. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all I got. He, uh, the, so the queen, we find out, is a queen. She's trying to crown queen? Cyril. What a queen. She's trying to queen put behavior. a little uh, a little thing on his head. Um, and She's given him the 22 hats. Yeah. Like a queen. <laughs> like a queen. Check her out. 
Uh, I do like that this is the ultimate showdown with the Sonic and the Doctor where he just like everything is the Sonic is useless in this area because <laughs> yeah. this is this is very fun yeah bit of, bit of fun with the Sonic obviously it can't do wood the, the Sonic's greatest enemy <laughs> wood <laughs> yeah I won't uh, this is a little bit later but at one point he was like trying to Sonic the the wooden people as, as they walk towards him yeah. and he was like and he says to the Sonic oh this was always going to happen yeah. eventually <laughs> The luck has run out on the Sonic. <laughs> yeah. Which uh, which is good fun. Uh, fun little uh, callback at one point as well. Yes. He, like Lily says something like, how how can trees be like small or whatever? And he's like, ah, never underestimate a tree. I met the forest of Cheem once. She fancied me. Then I made her walk Bit through fun. a propeller and she died. <laughs> and then she burnt her life for me. <laughs> Bit of fun. Gotta love a good callback. It's... A- I respect a season one callback. That's that's for yeah. the dedicated. That is that's yeah. a good callback a deep, right there. That's a deep cut, I guess. Yeah, it is. Well, I guess two thousand. What, what year are we in now? Two thousand eleven <coughs> on this show. Uh, the yeah tail end of, but yeah, yeah, six year callback. Not bad. Mm. Um, Lily notices the trees are singing, and she cries because she's happy, which doesn't seem like a big moment, but it might come back later in the episode. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, mm. we'll see. But the doctor comments that is very human of her. And very nice. Yeah, maybe whatever. Maybe we'll see what that see what happens with that. Anyway, so what's going on in this forest? So there's a whole bunch of trees. Yeah, all right, and these trees are alive, and they're like stars or whatever. And these stars basically want to get the fuck out of here. Yes, because Bill Bailey and his mates are burning the place down for fuel or something. They are. So the the they're basically melting the forest with acid rain because uh, it's yes. a valuable fuel source. Um. But yeah, that's pretty much their whole deal. And the trees are like, well, this is not... That's about the size of it. Yeah, the yeah. trees are like, this but they, is kind but of a they, shit. Yeah, but they need to get the fuck out of here. So they've set up this little trap mm. for, for a human to come along so they can basically use the human to, to basically pilot them out of there, essentially. I, I love this because I actually paused the episode and thought to myself for a second, right? Because the doctor says, it's the perfect trap. What's the one thing a human can't resist? A door. A door. And I thought to myself, if I was sat in a kind of liminal space... Right, mm. a big white void, and there was a door in front of me. Yeah, mm. like yeah, of course. You just go through. You, you want to see? It's the curiosity. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it is true. It is true. Um, and and it's 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 nice that there's no real villain. You know, mm. there's there's not any like a big grand master plan. There's no one trying to destroy the earth apart from that spaceship at the beginning but that was quickly dealt with you yeah. know there's there's no big mustache twirl and evil plan or anything like that it's just simply hey we're gonna die please help us yeah the trees are you pretty know? chill dudes once you give them a chance yeah yeah, yeah. they're just little boys Aww. and girls bless them yeah um so yeah so they they all end in <clears throat> yeah, sorry um they all end up in the same room not everyone uh madge hasn't quite caught up here i'm sorry outmumbered um she'll get there in a bit she will get there in a bit in a megazord um, but they all find out that the trees just want to chat to them, and through Cyril, they start to communicate how scared they are because of everything we just spoke about. Um, yeah, sure. Meanwhile, the yellow, tr- uh, the, the yellow stormtroopers, they just peace out. They hear the five minute warning for the acid rain, and they go, <laughs> Look, "I love women yeah. and everything, but we got to go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big sure. ups women and all that, but P- pick up women, but peace out. Yeah, we're off. Yeah, yeah. No teleport Fair for enough. you. Get fucked. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of brutal, isn't it? <laughs> they are like, "Oh, you're gonna die, by the way." Anyway, see ya. Yeah, Bye. They, they 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 show up. They hold her up. They they <laughs> leave her with less information than she had, or more confused yeah. information. Then they don't give her a teleport, and then they leave. <laughs> <laughs> brutal. Refuses to elaborate. Yeah, leaves. <laughs> <laughs> they don't come back as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, so Cyril tells the Doctor the stars are made out of uh, the souls of the forest and that they're trying to escape uh, because of the acid rain um, and they say the the, ch- the tree people say that the child is weak mm. so the Doctor's like alright fine I'll have a bit of this I'm fucking strong as fuck mate I'm hard as nails check me out I yeah. can do this in these fucking muscles uh, look at these yeah, like me, I can kill you, um, but he can't. He's he is also weak. He picks up the crown and just immediately like eat shit, starts screaming in pain. Mm. He's having a terrible time with him, and then Lily takes the crown off him. He's like, "You are weak, sauce, little beta bitch." <laughs> All right, <laughs> look at me, Chad Alpha Lily. I think she here. says, "I am woman, hear me roar." At some point, yeah, she does. Yeah, yeah. And Casey Perry, she plays. says, 
She's <laughs> she says you're a beta cuck. Yeah, actually, she does. Yeah. Well, sorry, everyone. We're recording this later than normal. <laughs> I think, yeah, we're just racing through this, aren't we? It's more the fact that we we're just going, get Lily turned around stuff. and said to the doctor, you're a beta cuck, and that is our commentary for the episode. <laughs> we want to get to the good stuff. Uh, we will slow down, I promise. This is all just, this is yeah. the, the journeyman stuff, right? We all know this kind of shit. This is this is story structure. Um, uh, so, yeah, so the, the crown, it has no effect on Lily. It's absolutely fine with Lily, mm. but Cyril and the doctor fucks them up. They can't handle it. Um, Plays the regeneration the doctor. sound effect for the Doctor. It, I knew you. I fucking knew you'd mention it. Because it's, it's you, there. Anytime the regeneration sound effect plays, you always mention it. Because it counts as a death. Uh, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Stop this. <laughs> um, oh, it seemed to affect the Doctor a lot more than it affected Cyril for some reason. Yeah, I think... Um, I don't know. I think maybe because there was he had been a parent in the past. Maybe why? Where you got that from? Because it's it's Lily. It works with Lily, but it's not as strong with Lily as it is without Mumbard because she's a parent and a woman. Whereas the Doctor's ticking one boxes. He's a parent and not a woman. Yeah. See what I'm saying? I'm also just positing nonsense. Like this could be yeah, nothing. You yeah. are you are positing complete nonsense. <laughs> I don't know where you got that from. Anyway, <laughs> Madge pilots the eighty eighty towards the tower. Mm. Tell you what, I like the way this looks because mm. it looks like shit. But it looks like good shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it almost looks like it's stop motion. It does. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that kind of Ray Harry Hauser vibe sort of thing. It looks very cool. Mm. I like it. Early aliens vibe. Sigourney Weaver in the mech suit situation. Oh, get off aliens, man. Grow up. I've been off it. I've been off my been, alien nonsense for months. We right? know you've been working on aliens, all right? Move on. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, it tells about the Terminator. I like the Terminator. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's also stop motion towards the end of Terminator One. Oh, who cares? <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, outmumbered makes her way there. I do like that the doctor's cheering her on, and she's like, "Shut up!" <laughs> yeah, I'm really trying Fizing. to not crash this right now. Yeah, but she does crash it. Yeah, because of course, again, well, <laughs> the woman driver joke is back. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately here it, it rears its ugly head. Unfortunately, it does reappear once again. Unfortunately. <laughs> The script is in the middle of building up the idea that there is nothing on planet Earth more powerful than a mother. Right. Yeah. And then But what if she was behind the wheel? Am I right, boys? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh dear Lord. Um, uh, but yeah, so they all get reunited. Um the the thing crashes, she mm. she makes her way up. Um and they're all together again, and the relay crown pretty much immediately gets put on outmumbered straight away. I do like, first of all, that when she comes into the tower, because obviously the acid rain has started to pour, she says, uh, stay indoors, the weather is frightful. Yeah. Which I think is a, a fun little reference, a fun little Christmas reference. She's a person Enjoy. of the time. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. It feels very 1941, doesn't it? <laughs> it does, yeah. The weather outside is frightful. It's good stuff. But the um, fire... It's so delightful. It's so delightful. And, and there's since no there's no... Oh, okay. <laughs> Let it snow. Let it snow. Let it snow. Well, and Lawrence, let you go as you tell us what happens next. I will do. Um, so, <clears throat> um, bum, 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 I went up and... Don't, don't don't take it away from me. I'll be back in a sec. Okay. <laughs> Three. No, 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 hang on. Two... <laughs> Uh, right, Whoa. so the relay crown gets put on out mumbered. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not cutting that. I want so everyone I will, to hear the first pressure. Of all, I will, <laughs> first of all, I will just say, and I will let you carry on, but nice little moment where Madge gets to the top of the tower and gives uh, both the kids a hug. That's just nice. It is lovely. Yeah, it's a yes. little reunion. Yes. Um, but, so the relay crown gets put on her, and I do like that immediately she's kind of in a loopy trance because it's obviously. Yeah. It, it, it's found its power source, right? So it's like a kind of. It, the episode communicates that it's a match made, essentially. This will yeah. work. And she's like, oh, this is beautiful. And she's just kind of and got then, really drunk on it. <laughs> and I like that the doctor, like, 
the doctor's at the bottom of the tower tail. First of all, it does this thing which often happens in episodes like this. Whenever there's a big tower and people have to walk up the like a hundred flights of stairs or whatever it takes to get up there, they always do it in like a second flat and they get to the top and they're absolutely fine. <laughs> Fuck off, all right? <laughs> you would be drenched in sweat. You'd be huffing and puffing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Outrageous. All right. But whatever. Um, it's a TV show, I know. Um, I, <laughs> but... on, on that, my move has been fun, right? Because I, I went from a two-story house to a three-story house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I am I am noticing my frustration if I'm upstairs, <laughs> right? Because the, 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 basically the little attic floor is the bedroom, right? Yes. And I'm noticing now if I've forgotten, like, oh, I need, should have got myself a glass of water. I'm like, two stairs. I get down, I'm like, no problem. Oh, but then I've got to go back up them. There's two flights of stairs. <laughs> Do you have an ensuite? No, 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 no. Afraid not. So you'd still have to go down a flight of stairs. Uh, yeah, just for a little wee. <laughs> or if you, but she use the bathroom sink. T excuse me. You use the bathroom sink. I'm not pissing in the sink. Just have a glass. No, not for pissing, you idiot. <laughs> okay. I'm talking about if you want to. Have, if, I'm saying for a glass of water. Oh yeah, I mean I could do, but uh, yeah, I've never really given it a go. It doesn't feel. I, I also quite like an icy water if I'm taking it. To it's bed. the exact same water. Yeah, but it, I don't keep my ice in the sink. This. Uh, that's fair enough. Okay, that's fair enough. But there's none of this. Oh no, it's different. No, it's not. No, it's the not. Same yeah, it's a mental water. barrier. You got. You just got to yes. get past it. <laughs> get over it. Okay. You guys want a glass of piss water? <laughs> I actually <laughs> scooped this one water. fresh out the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. <laughs> um, so, um, what else is going on? Um, the I am the Doctor starts playing as it has done many times this episode. I was going to say, it's a strange place to bring it up now, considering it's happened like 12 times so far. No, but it's, it's, but, yeah. it's a bit prominent now, right? Because okay, sure. the match is made. The... Well, excuse me, I was going to say oh, please. that um, it's a bit of fun how like the, do the Doctor is at the bottom of the tower and he sees like all the stars pouring into the top of it, basically going into into outnumbered yeah um so he so he rushes up and he he sees like claire claire uh, madge mords whatever the fuck her name is outnumbered in the outnumbered in the like the trance like stay home he's like he's like madge madge are you okay and she's like yeah i'm fine man. i'm chilling <laughs> i'm chilling man I'm, I'm doing good how are you and he doesn't quite know how to react <laughs> he's like oh <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> um, but it is, there's a fun moment where, because like you say, it, it, the match is made, so everyone's all the all the souls have poured their way into Outmumbered's head. Um, yes, she has basically consumed the forest and is is starting yes. to be like it's beautiful. She can see a whole world in her head. It's 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 nice and lovely. And then obviously she says, uh, "One can't imagine being a forest," and then suddenly one can. <laughs> yes, it's it's a great stupid line. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but so. <sighs> It's yeah. It starts to take off, and the doctor says, essentially, "Do what I always do: hold on tight and pretend it's a plan." Yeah, yeah, which is good true. stuff. Uh, but Lawrence, you are of course missing the key ingredient here. I was course, allowing it to be for you, which you skipped over, and that is of course <laughs> uh, that the reason the doctor and Cyril were 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 deemed weak is because they are beta cuck men. Yes, okay? yeah, they're, they're, that's the <laughs> Yes, um, women are strong because uh, they uh, like nature. Nature is the base code, and basically, it's a, it's a translation from nature. And like because mothers carry life, essentially, that's kind of the the idea behind it. They need a mother. They need a mother's power, I guess, yeah. to to bring them through. Which I think is lovely. I think it's a, it's nice. It's yeah. Again, it, it is a shame that it, the episode has got some slight colouring to it with some certain yeah, dated humour. Sure, but yes, it, it is. Like you said, I think I think that's the perfect analogy for Stephen Moffat, right? It's it's the two steps <laughs> forward, one step back situation because it the concept yeah. is great. It's genuinely interesting. Also, a real powerful message to give to kids on Christmas Day as well. Mm. Like I just think I think it's very nice. It's very lovely. It's a little bit like it's not overly complex, but. It's no, it's but it doesn't need to be. Yeah, exactly. As well. yeah. It's 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 simple, and I think Christmas specials should be a little bit simple. They yeah. don't. We don't need like confusing mind fuckery plots, like you know the Big Bang and the Wedding of River Song and all that kind it's of stuff. It's Christmas Day, and the dogs are. I got the silence to all shoot themselves or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just need a nice, simple, family-friendly adventure. 
that we can enjoy and mm. have a sherry and a, a mince pie or whatever and you know and ignore your racist aunt while she's farting in the corner or whatever. Yeah, you know? that happens. That happens a bit. Yeah. I um. Yeah. What's your What is your Christmas drink of choice? Would you have a sherry? I, I no, I'm not a sherry man. No, my my Christmas drink usually is a Bailey's. Mm. You know, I love a Bailey's. Bailey's over ice, which uh, you just can't beat for me. I quite I go for it. I'm also partial to a snowball. What's a snowball? You ever had a snowball? I don't think so. What is it? It's like a snowball. I don't know. It's a snowball. It's becoming all the more clearer that your dad's <laughs> pouring the drinks on Christmas Day. It's my mum, actually. Okay. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. Look up a snowball drink. What is a snowball? Uh, you also have a Bucks Fizz in the morning. Snowball. Uh, was it a cocktail? Yeah, sure. Lemonade and ice. <laughs> that I, can't be that, right. I knew there was lemonade in it. No, there's, there's lemonade, but there's also some sort of alcohol. Um, to it as well. I'm just seeing lime. Some, not seeing any. Some some creme liqueur to it. This can't be. Oh, uh, ad advocat. It's summer with an A. Sounds Russian. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Advocat. Advocat. Nathan, I've made you a snowball you. for Christmas. Thank you, thank you, mother. <laughs> comrade mother. Oh. <laughs> thank you, comrade mother. Comrade mother. Let us drink to mother Russia. <laughs> Two snowballs raised for the motherland. <laughs> This racist. <laughs> Could be. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe we should stop this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we let's draw possible. a line in the sand here. <laughs> yeah. And apologise and do better. And it, what's your Christmas drink of choice, Lawrence? Um, I could go for a mulled wine. <clears throat> a mulled wine? Mm. That's warming to the Awful. soul. And you can get it anywhere. Horrible. Horrid. Nice. Nice Outrageous. one. Outrageous. I want a glass of wine. I don't want it to be warm and shit. All right. <laughs> it's hard to argue with your flawless logic. But... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. I do. I want a glass of chilled Pinot on an <laughs> evening. All right. I don't oh, want none of this fucking warm shit in a little cup. No, all right? no. White wine is rank. All white wine is disgusting. You're wrong. You ever read? You haven't. I'm about to say, You ever had a red wine? You ever? You ever put yes. the bow out? <laughs> I've had a red wine. Once. What's your red wine of choice if you're going to have a red wine? Oh, I don't know. I don't drink red wine. If I'm being honest, I like a, I like a, I like a white and then like a rosé. Okay. All right, that's fair. I'm, I'm a, mm. I'm a. I only have two. These are the. This is the nobbiest thing I'll ever say. Right, I have two favorite <laughs> red wines. Is a there's a okay. there's a Sangiovese and a Montepulciano. <laughs> oh fuck it. <laughs> You really did grow up in a castle, didn't you? I, that was all at uni. I had this Look at uni. Look at this little posh. That wasn't at uni. You was drinking fucking... I've seen what you were drinking at uni, okay? You was not drinking a fucking... A requiescat no. of or whatever the fuck you just said. Very good. No, when I was around the in-laws at Christmas, I would. But not at uni when I had to buy it. <laughs> Then I would be drinking toilet water. I'd be. Having... You never had fucking in-laws at uni. No, but you like wasn't dating uh, your wife at uni. No, I. But you know, no, I was. I was third year. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it all blurs together after a while, doesn't it? It does. Yeah, it becomes one <coughs> big long yeah. drunk time. <laughs> yeah, that happened. Do you remember when you punched through a banister? <sighs> <laughs> do you want to you keep bringing that up do you have a problem with it or something my banister was always, they replaced it you but it was always a slightly different lived, banister you haven't lived there that was like fucking four houses ago right? get over it all right i still haven't unpacked one of the boxes though so it's still going on <laughs> shut the fuck up anyway doctor who um so what's going on what's what are they up to now so what happens is basically the dome starts to fly through the Doctor Who title sequence. Yes, which is nice. They they yeah. removed the the text. <laughs> they did take out the text for us, so that's pretty good. Yeah, imagine if they just good kept Matt fun. Smith there. <laughs> you just saw the Doctor Who look. <laughs> Bit of fun. Oops. <laughs> he suddenly gets orange and starts glowing all around as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> the clip runs out so they just loop it <laughs> yeah it just goes again <laughs> but it's the YouTube version so it ends with like Peter Capaldi <laughs> saying don't forget <laughs> don't forget to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel <laughs> did you see that poll in Discord what one do you associate when you hear 
the words. Don't forget to subscribe to the. It's what, Peter Capaldi. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's always Peter Capaldi. It's, yeah, yeah, it's always Peter Car- Peter Capaldi. Yeah, a hundred percent. They launched it with him, right? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So That's anyway, why it takes so off. Probably. They're flying through the Doctor Who title sequence without the text. Mm. Um, and that's the the mothership. Did we skip over that incredible pun? Uh, no, no, I don't think we did. Okay, well then we'll get. To no, that sorry, I, I, sorry. Yes, I think we did. Yes. Well, now that we've acknowledged the saying. pun, we can move on. <laughs> Great, <laughs> wonderful stuff. You done it again, Stephen. <laughs> Take five. Um, yeah, Doctor says, "Do what I do. Hold time. Pretend like it's a plan. That's a good bit of stuff." Mm. Um, so in order to get home, um, Madge outmumbered basically needs to think of home. And she like she really needs to feel it. So the doctor tells her that she basically needs to think about home until she can't bear it, until it hurts. Mm. So she she cl- she clutches the the telegram in her pocket, pulls well pulls it out of her pocket and clutches it before basically doing just that. And so she we she thinks about her home life, and on the like little window screen, we start to see like some of her memories. Mm. Uh, I'm sure we'll come back to this, but. Reg and how they met and how he, <laughs> you know, he followed her home and stuff. Yeah, we'll come but back to this in a minute. <laughs> we'll we'll move on. We'll come back to that in a little bit. Um, so and yeah, and then we see Reg's of well, sorry, we see flashes of Reg, uh, of Mister Smith flying the plane. Hmm. Um, and obviously she cries out that she doesn't want to see that. She she actually says at one point, "Don't make me watch him die." She says, and then the kids are like, "Excuse me, <laughs> uh, what now?" <laughs> Uh, 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 what the fuck, yeah. mother? <laughs> um, like, squeeze me sauce? I don't actually think he's dead because you said he was coming back for Christmas. So someone needs to uh, get this story find... straight. Let's say hypothetically. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For the sake of the argument. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's how the kids kind of find out. And then they're like, uh, what What the fuck? Mm. Um, so they're, they're not having a good time in that moment. No. I do I do think it's worth no. noting, especially for the ending of the episode as well, that she she does try and avoid doing this. She does try and get the doctor to do this. She says, Why can't you? Yes. And he, he yes, makes it does kind of a point of saying, you know, it's kind of fucked for me because I don't have a home and I'm also, you know, I'm I'm mm. I'm a lot older than I look and I don't I can't feel anything as hard as this anymore. And it's yeah. uh, that's just a just, the Matt Smith just breezes over it, but it's such a good delivery of the way he just <laughs> says that, and it, you just see that his his own heart break a little bit, um, yeah, which is is lovely. But the episode, yeah, I think it's just good that an, a moment like that can be almost wasted because the episode's too busy doing other good stuff. Like, there is other good stuff to get to, yeah. yeah, that's right, that's right. Um, so yeah, like you say, the um, it's all coming up on the screen. Flashbacks of Mister Smith. There's nice moments of him looking after his kids over the years. Like as you kind of mm-hmm. see them grow up until they become the the actor and actress that plays them in the episode immediately. <laughs> until they're recast to the the right actor. Yeah, yeah, which is always fun. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, I just. Um... <clears throat> oh, so so we see we see the the scene again of um of Reg flying the plane. Yes. Um, and he sees just as the plane is about to go down, he's blinded by a a, a bright flashing light, mm. and then. And then we're back with everyone in the dome, which is kind of like, kind of crash landed, but it's all okay. Sort of at Digby's house, the the trees have all fucked off. They're all safe now. They're among the stars. The doctor says, um, and the the woods and people are just like basically empty shells now. They're yeah. just little statues, little stumps but on the ground. He does now. make a point of being like, but they're happy, and you they're did happy that, yeah. and they're safe uh, because of because of Madge, because of our mum, but which is good. Mm. Um, and then she's like, "Oh, wonderful! That's great. Let's all go enjoy Christmas then." And then the kids are like, "Well, actually, yeah, mother, hang on. Let's, let's hold the fuck up a minute, <laughs> shall we? All right, let's just biggly baggly back the fuck up a second. Here's here's another moment. We skipped over the other moments I cried, but here's another moment I cried is when the kids visibly back up from her. Yeah, yeah, that's that's good. That is good. Mm. Yeah, just a good little. It's I, I don't know if it was in the script or if it was the director's choice, but it's a great inclusion that just like. Yeah, shit's not done. Like good actors, these kids. Yeah, they are. They are quite good. Yeah, usually pretty shit. Yeah. And then I say kids, like they're they're not kids. Like, no. Well, the the boys are kids, but like the girl is like, she's obviously playing like, younger. I think. Yeah, yeah, she's playing younger than she is, which will become evident in an email as well. But oh, really? I've, I've got. Yeah. I think I might have a tweet on the same thing. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe that's where I read it. Then. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I only got four oh, tweets. Maybe. I'm reading them all out. Everyone. 
I don't. I, I don't. When I've got when I only get four tweets, I like to read them all out because some. Otherwise, I'm just is choosing any of them one Ari? person. Is any of them Ari? Because she's banned for life. That is true. We'll see if one is. Then you know. No, that's not true. Ari, you're not banned. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um. <laughs> so. Uh, so so yes. Yeah, so they land. They land. They're all safe. And then the doctor is like. You probably you probably need a minute, all right? Mm. You guys want to be alone? I'll give you a minute. Great line where uh, Madge says, "I can't imagine anyone would prefer to be alone," and then just says, "Stay close, caretaker." Um, so he leaves. He goes outside. Um, while they, while she gets a second to basically tell her kids that their dad is dead. Um, uh, and as he steps outside, he clearly he notices something. Yeah. In the distance. It'd be hard to miss it when you see it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be pretty... It'd be, it'd be pretty impossible. Is this the biggest say. plane that ever existed? Some might Spoilers. say. There's no plane there, Lawrence. I don't know what you're oh, talking about. Oh, yeah, my about. mistake. Um, so anyway, yeah. the, the, the doctor... Yeah, he wanders down the stairs, he sees something, and then just as upstairs out Mumbert is starting to explain, you know, she says, you know, did Dad get lost? He got very mm. lost. There was no stars to guide his way home. The moon wasn't out this night, unfortunately. Um, the mm. doctor just kind of whips his head up. Perfect timing from perfect from crazy trauma <laughs> could mm. have been inflicted. Um, <laughs> but anyway, he pops his head up and goes, "You might actually really want to check out yeah. some mad shit. You might want to ho- hold your fucking horses right there yeah. and uh, come step outside." It's Mr. Uh, Smith. Yes, yeah, so as it turns, it is. It is Mr. Smith in all his glory. Mm. Mr. Smith, I need you. <laughs> uh, as as it turns out, the bright light that Reg saw uh, before the plane went down was was Madge flying through the vortex. Mm. Um, and then we see that in a nice little flashback. We see them being like, oh, it's the only thing in the sky. We'll bloody follow it home for Queen and Country and see where we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and all this stuff. Or for King and Country, I should say. I, was, um, I also wrote down at this point, fuck it, Moffat loves like Spitfires flying through the time vortex than you were in space. <laughs> God. Mark Gattis wrote that of a one. Yeah, but he's seeing it. He's no, it. you always do this. You know, you can't, you, you can't keep doing this, okay? They're birds of a feather, these men. No, <laughs> you need to stop. All right. Um, but yes, uh, so we, we see the, the plane flying through the vortex, which I think is just a nice shot. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and yeah, she guided him home, uh, so he was able to land safely with them. He lands, he's at Uncle Digby's house, like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. I was over the channel a minute ago. Yeah. It was nighttime. And it also wasn't Christmas, Christmas morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it also wasn't Christmas Eve. This is outrageous. I do like that that's the part of the thread, that she's like, it's Christmas, and he's like, how is that possible? And I'm like, brother, <laughs> how is it everything possible here? <laughs> yeah. But this is beautiful. This is like... People can like complain about this, and I'm just like, oh, I just so aggressively do not care yeah. because it's so sweet and beautiful, and it's so nice to have like a family reunion on Christmas and to see this sort of stuff, and to actually, as it turns out, they're not dead, and Stephen just this once everybody lives Moffat yeah. has fucking done it again, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful. Doctor Who magic. I love it. Fuck you. Yeah, I, I. I was on board with it. I was really happy. I was like, oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm really glad they didn't end the Christmas special by being like, but some people, sometimes people do die. And mm. Christmas is still Christmas or whatever. Like, I, I thought But that... sometimes they don't, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I, I'm right? happy that it ended like that. And I really like that, like, right after it, you're already on board. But then you just see them all, like, when when we saw the, the house earlier, the Doctor had blown it up to be, like, this big, like, toy wonderland, right? It was such an overcompensation. Mm of what yeah. the kids would have needed to have a good Christmas. And yes, there's there's just one shot and it's so good. And it's the family and they're all sat playing a board game by like a little mm. roaring fire and it's warm and it's like a yellowy orangey light. And I'm like, yeah, they, they can't compare. There's overcompensation yeah. with toys. And then there's just having your parents at Christmas, which is beautiful. Exactly. And that is beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> What a, what, a, what a piece of cinema. It's it's good, man. It's very good. But the episode's not over. It might feel like it might be, but it's not. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, um, so yeah. So, Madge goes to speak with the Doctor. Uh, bit, oh, oh, first of all, the Doctor was ongoing watching the scene, and he says, happy crying. Humany woman. Yeah, he says. It's very nice. Very nice, indeed. Yes. Um, so, yeah, Madge goes to speak with the Doctor, basically thanking him for what she did, and then she asks him to to stay for Christmas. 
And the doctor being the doctor is like, ah, no, thank you. Yeah. Um, Peace. <laughs> I got a bounce. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then uh, basically a lot along the conversation, he mentions that his friends all think he's dead. And she in like in a great like mum way, mm. I think, is just like, well, go tell them you're alive. Go on, off you pop. Yeah, you know? exactly. just <laughs> <laughs> fine mom i guess i didn't it, well, i have noticed it before but i i was reminded of it that it is funny that this is the doctor's go-to trick he sees someone and they go so is this your tardis is this your time machine and he goes yeah and they go won't you stay for a for a christmas dinner or a christmas lunch or something and he always goes no nah, but check it, it does something really cool when i fuck off <laughs> stay and watch and i'll never see you again <laughs> he does do that a lot. That is his joke. Yeah, right? it's his trait, and it normally works. To be fair, <laughs> yeah. Um, he never has to deal with the consequences. He's like, I'm out. Yeah, bitch. he probably watches them on the TV and is like, just flipping yeah. the bird. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> See ya. He oh, shouts, yeah, "Eat my stuff. dust!" As he, <laughs> as he disappears. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, our mumbled tells him to to head off she like uh watches the the tardis disappear just as mr smith comes in mm. um he's like what, what the fucking hell was that and she's like oh it's just the doctor returning to the time vortex yeah lovely place been there myself and he's like so is he to be fair i'll take it why not no idea yeah, what the fuck's I'm going on <laughs> yeah the only thing not? i know for sure is that my wife can't drive <laughs> come on that's he what, never says that. that's what he says he never said that <laughs> anyway, uh, it's Christmas Day 2000 and whatever. All right. Yeah, who cares? Okay. <laughs> who cares? It doesn't matter. It's Christmas Day 2000 and whatever. Uh, there's a knock at the door. Uh, the doctor's knocking at the door, and it turns out it's uh, Amy and Rory's oh, door. Time. We hear Amy just like yelling, like, <laughs> that's fucking carol singers again. <laughs> I've had enough. All right. And she's coming out. <laughs> <laughs> with a water pistol ready to shoot yeah. <laughs> whoever's there which in itself is very funny but oh my god this scene fucking kills me man it's, what a what an ending to the episode yeah really. and i it's it, st- it sets the status quo for season seven right like it does cause oh yeah season six ended with yeah the doctor's dead but yes they know he's alive and he's out there yes maybe they'll see each other again and it's oh man it, it's it's Everything about it is perfect. Even even the fact that Amy and Rory's front door is TARDIS blue. Like, there's just something yes. about it where I'm like, God, this is good. This is so good. But yeah. It is. It is beautiful. But then, like, <laughs> I love the the little, like, <laughs> kind of, like, false animosity they both have yeah. at first. <laughs> like, the... the, the River told us, oh, well, of course she did. Yeah. She's a good girl, you know? The little the little back and forth sniping and the little, I'm not hugging first. Well, I'm not hugging first either. And they both just, like, <laughs> ignore each other for a second before eventually they both give in and just share a nice hug, oh. which is, 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 it's just very sweet. And then Rory comes along and it's, it's beautiful. And, and then when they say, um, are you coming, are you coming in for Christmas dinner? Um, and he's like, oh, if it's no trouble. Um, and then we learn that they always, oh, it was, yeah, they always <laughs> put a plate out for it. And that moment just fucking kills me, man. Mm. It just the look on his face as they say that. It's so, so beautiful. He doesn't get it. it so he can't much. understand no. it, but he knows that he's suddenly no. going. He spent the entire episode being like humans crying out of happiness <laughs> is beautiful and it's lovely, mm-hmm. but it's something that he can't, like he even says it, like, you know, I can't feel that. Mm. that capacity of emotions anymore like i'm too old i'm too withered i'm too done and And then the way like the episode ends with him just like it almost seems like he's gonna fuck off kind of yeah yeah it it almost seems like he's gonna be like do what i usually do and like i don't think he ever was but it kind of almost seems like that could be the case but like he he turns around he's and he's like facing the door again and then he just like slowly wipes a tear away from his mm. eye and just like can't quite believe that like he has a family and he has people who love him. And it's so, it's so beautiful. And then just the way he like closes the door with a smile on his face. Yeah. And that's it. That's the end of the episode. It's, oh, but beautiful. like when you talk about character development for the doctor, it's massive. Yeah, it really is. Like, I, I know people will say like, oh, he did it with the Tylers and all of this stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but he never. 
that was it's always been a reluctant this is the first time the doctor has shown up himself of his own accord he didn't run from it like it, and it that's massive it's this this feels very different to the tylers for me mm. this i don't quite know why but it just does the like the tylers this... also felt more like i'm still the doctor mm. please love me <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah this like the Pons are a family, okay? Yeah. And, like, the the first half of Series 7, like, I feel like really leans into that family dynamic mm. in quite a way, which I which I really enjoy, even more so when River's in the picture as well. Yeah. They are, like, a fully-fledged family together. And it's it's a dynamic that I love so much, <laughs> which makes some of it, some of the stuff we'll see, even more heartbreaking. Um, but but it, it is it is just a, a beautiful dynamic, and it's 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 great. It's all four of them together are just incredible. I think. Yeah, yeah. Arthur, Arthur Darvill yeah. always comes in understated, and it always lands. He, 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 it does. He, he pitches yeah. Rory perfectly, where he's just a casual bloke. Mm. Yeah, and it, it, just the whole just the whole like, oh, you're still alive. Their mm. names like we've done that, and he's like, oh, okay, sick. <laughs> don't need to <laughs> yeah. fuck around with this then. <laughs> It's I don't know man. It's just beautiful. It's just such a a beautiful ending. I love the Doctor having a family, having people to care for him, yeah. and I I feel like the the implication is that maybe it's it's just Christmas dinner that they put out a plate for him. But I like to think it's every meal. I like to think it's every night. Yeah, they put out a plate for the Doctor just in case he shows up, which is oh man. It's sweet and it's beautiful and it keeps me up at night. <laughs> so, <laughs> so there we go. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's the end. That is the end. The end of a beautiful episode. The end of a beautiful podcast hosted by two beautiful boys. Mm, but not before we do our lengthy segment. <laughs> but not before this half an hour segment <laughs> that we'll get to now. The end of the week. This is everyone's favourite section of the show where we get to take a chance to look back on some of the weird, some of the wonderful, some of the grubby little characters who come across our screens each and every week. Uh, Lawrence, who, I think I might have an idea, but who is your weirdo for this week? Would you want to do it on three? Because I feel like it's the same. It's not. I can tell you now it's not. Really? Okay, all right, fine. Yeah, I've been I've been pulling your leg the entire episode. I can't tell if now you're pulling my leg or if you No, I'm genuinely not. I genuinely have a different one. Oh, this is outrageous. Alright, mine's obviously Mr. Smith yes. and his stalking rears. Yes. Yeah. Cause what well, I don't need to tell people why <laughs> this is strange, surely, right? The following he, so, I think, look, I understand they play it more whimsy and play it more silly. And like mm. it, it even it even kind of comes full circle in a nice way where he also he follows her home and that's he how followed he her home lives. again. Yeah. 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 But just the whole like yeah. he followed me home every day until I agreed to marry him. I'm like, that's not I didn't like to make a fuss, she said. Yeah, yeah. like that's that's see I okay, was, I'm I'm with you because I was very tempted to make Reg my weirdo for this very reason too. Yeah. Okay. Until I thought about it. And then I was like it's weird. <laughs> But it's also accurate. Yeah. Because if you ask your grandparents how they got together, just everyone go ask your grandparents how they, if they're still alive, yeah. uh, go ask them how they got together to, and just get ready to hear a story about your grandmother being pestered for a long time mm. until she eventually <laughs> gave in and said yes. That age old romance. I love I the notebook. <laughs> I love The Notebook. It's genuinely one of my favorite movies. I think it's a beautiful movie. Yeah. But that starts off with Ryan Gosling just essentially harassing. <laughs> um, um, oh, fuck. What's her name? One of the most Rachel McAdams. Brilliant, beautiful actresses. Rachel McAdams. Yes, of course. Harassing Rachel McAdams until she eventually decides to date him. Yeah. You know? and, and he's like, thank you. Oh. <laughs> if I have to. Yeah. And that's that's what put me off it. Because, like, yeah, weird. <laughs> But also, but then they're birds, Nathan. Accurate. Then they're, be they're, bir they're beautiful oh, they're birds. birds. Yes, they are beautiful birds. Yes, of course. So, so yeah. So I didn't go with them for that reason, but I understand. Thank you. I get it. I respect it. I don't respect you. Okay, good. Who's but, your weirdo? Then? <laughs> but I respect that. My weirdo, Lawrence. Let me scroll down. Uh, my weirdo is whoever 
built that police box that we see in 1938 at the start of the episode uh, for the simple reason that they wrote on the sign of the door, pull to open. Oh, God. Okay. When the dog's out, we clearly see the doors push to open. Okay. That should not be the case. Whoever built that tar sorry, tar whoever built that police box built it incorrectly and incorrectly labeled that this sign. This feels okay? unfair. This, <laughs> this feels like a cheat somehow. How is that a cheat? <laughs> that is incorrect instructions upon that door. You've been okay? waiting for a valid reason to bring this up again. A justifiably... Re oh, God, I hate you. Hey, hey, <laughs> look. They put the wrong instructions on the door. Yep. So... <laughs> They should be fired in 1938. Should have. Okay. <laughs> okay. And frankly, it's that they weren't. <laughs> exactly. And I, for one, will not stand for it. And of course, that is something <sighs> I then said. <laughs> All right. You good with that? Yeah, sure. You proud of that one? <laughs> Want to keep, want to keep that, do you? Nathan, I don't know if you're aware of this. All right. <laughs> okay. I, I certainly am. <laughs> All it right. is the time of the show where the audience get to have their say. What happens is Nathan... What? Yeah, I know. Nathan tweets out a post, lets everyone know what episode we are recording and when. Then our lovely loyal listeners get to send in their thoughts and we can read out some of them. So, Nathan, with the emails, please. Well, maybe I want the tweets first. Well, I don't like the fact that you keep changing it around. Well, don't worry, because we're doing the emails first. Okay. Uh, this first one comes in from Caitlin Collins. Whoa. Beautiful name, beautiful little alliteration, uh, who says, best pod ever is the subject line. Don't know about that. Hi, guys. Uh, just wanted to let you know how much I love the podcast. I haven't caught up yet. Just about to listen to The Time of Angels. Uh, but I grew up during the Big Russ and Moffat eras, and listening to the podcast has reinvigorated my love for Doki Who yeah. more than ever. Well, that's beautiful. Uh, also, on a more personal note, I've recently found out I'm going in for heart surgery in the near future, and the thought of having you two bickering to keep me company during recovery is a very comforting thought indeed. Fucking hell, not comforting for me. Yeah, <laughs> you should. I don't know. You I, I don't feel like ways. you should trust us with that responsibility. No, like. we are not ready for that responsibility. We don't deserve that responsibility. Yeah. Uh, that is very sweet of you to say, and I really hope that all goes well for you. I hope that's all okay there. Uh, that's all. I just wanted to say how awesome you guys are. Keep up the good work. P.S. Captain Jack is the face of Bo. Deal with it, Nathan. Well, you can't be made. I'm in a bit of a difficult <laughs> can't situation be made. here <laughs> because far, for it, far be it for me to disagree with someone who's about to have heart <laughs> surgery, but like... <laughs> All I will say is my opinions are my opinions. But can you respect others' opinions on this no. specific matter? <sighs> on this matter, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> but I do respect Caitlin Collins as a person, and I do hope that surgery goes well. Wish you all the best, Indeed. Caitlin. Thank you, and that's a lovely thing to say about the show as well. So much appreciated. Good luck with the surgery. And yeah, he is the face of both. It's just a fact. It's not a fact. It's, it's never explicitly said. <laughs> um, this one is from Christina, who says a Merry Hoomas to you, lads. Hey. Uh, seasons, brackets, and end of summer greetings. Uh, how time flies. Feel like last Hoomas was only a few months ago. <laughs> bit of fun um i have to say re-watching this episode was an unexpected delight i remember not thinking very highly of this one when it first aired finding it to be overly corny and silly uh, i don't think i've actually given it a proper rewatch until now and i'm grateful to learn that 17 year old me clearly didn't appreciate art when she saw it she also didn't realize she was female lol <laughs> So clearly he had a knack for missing the obvious. A twist. <laughs> a twist indeed. Uh, as I've gotten older, I've definitely regained my childhood appreciation for Doctor Who magic, uh, which must have vanished at some point during my teens. This episode is full of wholesome whimsy and festive fun with an ending that brought many happy tears. In short, all the right ingredients for an excellent Christmas special. Mm. Couldn't agree more. I think, I think that perfectly sums it up. If I'm That's being your honest. exact experience that you were saying. <sighs> 
shut up, Lawrence. Oh, no. Uh, I'm frankly annoyed at myself for ignoring it all this time, especially during the Chibnall areas when there weren't any Christmas specials and I would try to re-watch old ones during the holidays. For whatever reason, I prioritise the next Doctor over this one. Come on. Past me takes yet another L. <laughs> They do indeed. <laughs> I greatly enjoyed this episode and I'm excited to hopefully uncover more forgotten gems in the future. I know there are some controversial ones coming up later in the Moffat era, but honestly, those are the ones I'm most excited for at this rate. P.S. So should I not send both a tweet and an email for the same episode? I'd honestly <laughs> be doing that every time I wrote in. Lol. Uh, Geronimo, Christina, Tina Tomlin, brackets, she, her uh thank you christina tina tomlin me very much appreciate it uh look, i know we've been like <laughs> mean to ari and joking around mm. and stuff but you can send into it's absolutely fine it's, it's preferred in. if we're honest it is preferred yeah because we need all the people that write it we can if we're honest yeah. so yeah we we do very much appreciate it so please write in fucking send in three emails each week i don't care I'm, i'll read them all out. i'm also i won't no i no, won't no, we've but, we did that for long enough yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, I won't. But I'll appreciate it. <laughs> I'm also very excited to watch the um, later Christmas specials of the Moffat era because I I hear they apparently just get ludicrous. You no, I don't think that's the case. No, not ludicrous. I think there's one in particular which uh, throws people through a loop and does kind of stand out. But I think for the most part, they are all such uh, good great beautiful christmas stories mm. bit of sizzle and also the next the next christmas special is going to be even shorter because it's mid-season oh okay yeah yeah we've got like five episodes of uh of series seven then a christmas special Fucking hell. and then the rest of series seven <laughs> do i have to go so, back yeah. to rhyming intros after that one then <laughs> <laughs> well yeah because it's a new year oh, so. no. <laughs> judging by your logic <laughs> I like that I can't yeah. keep up with my New Year's resolution. I have to. <laughs> I have to fall back. Um, yeah. It, anyway, thank you, Christina. Is that emails? No, there's one more. One more. Can count? Please. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. You stupid idiot. Oh. <laughs> okay. Nasty boy. <laughs> Uh, this last email is from Tom who says hello boys hello Nathan and Lawrence uh, it's my first time writing into the show uh, but I've been listening for some time now really enjoying the pod uh, y'all keep me entertained on my commute to work each Monday so thank you for that uh, this was the first episode of Doctor Who I watched uh, it had been starting to build in popularity here in the US for a little while and a girl I was dating at the time was big into the show so we watched it together at Christmas not having seen any other episodes or knowing anything about the show I was very confused by a lot of it <laughs> um, but, but I found Matt Smith hilarious and very charming and it was because of his performance that I went back and watched the rest of the show before the next season aired Doctor Who has now been a staple in my life since then I have five different tattoos inspired by the show, Jesus. Uh, and my wife and I had a photo booth at our wedding that was designed to look like the TARDIS. Sounds very cool. Uh, thank you for sharing my love of the show. All the best, Tom. That's sweet. That is very love sweet. It's, it's, I always find it really fun to like hear accounts in real time because, <laughs> like, yeah, that series yeah. five and six was when the show started blowing up in, in America. And it's, it's yeah. crazy to hear people actually write in and be like, yeah, I had I literally just caught wind of it because of that. That's nuts. It's very cool. I like that a lot. You're not a purist though like me. Sows. I've been watching it since 1960, whatever. That's not true. Yeah, it is. You can't prove it's it wasn't. He was born in 1997. You don't know that. I do know that. I know when you were born. I have your birth certificate. That, no, why? Why? <laughs> you don't need to worry about that, all right? Okay. <laughs> Slightly more concerned now. From my silly you don't need trend. to worry about why I may have your birth certificate and your passport. Okay, you don't need to worry about. Okay, that. good. Uh, is it tweets time? It is tweets time, Lawrence. It's tweets time. So here's a tweet song. We're all tweeting that. Still, still got, got legs. legs. Pod. Cast. Nope. Oh, no, just pause. That's okay. Twitter handle. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, comes in from <laughs> Ashley at uh, Gus Scott Ashley. Don't know. If I'm almost certainly pronouncing that wrong. Um, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. I genuinely don't get the hate for this episode. It has issues, sure, but no more than any other episode of this silly show. It's a simple, sweet Christmas story. Yeah, couldn't agree more. I 
like I said, I didn't know there was a lot of hate for this, but. No, I mean, yeah. Yeah. well, actually, no, that's not true. Yeah, I did. No, you knew there. Was, you knew you had hatred. Yeah, but... I'm sorry. I was. I was only half listening to what you said. Incredible. Nathan doesn't care <laughs> when people write in. No, I was pulling up the tweets on my phone so I can see them as well, Lawrence. Okay. <laughs> uh, next week comes in from Bird's Eye View VT. Um, it has its ups and downs. Not my favorite episode, but also not the worst. I love the concept, but the part that always gets me is the end with the ponds. We always have a place set out for you. And the doctor gets confused as to why he's crying. OMG, my heartstrings every time. But yeah, that is a uh, yeah. It's a it's yeah, a gut punch of an ending, but in a nice way. In a nice, it leaves you feeling festively bittersweet. I think a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Lex writes in. I always hated this until recent rewatch. This seems to be a theme. <laughs> It does. Yeah. I'm not alone. Uh, I always hated them until a recent rewatch where I found it to be much better than I remembered. It's full of heart and Christmas magic, and I shed a tear at the end. Still not the best as it's quite slow in parts, but a very enjoyable episode. Yeah, it definitely slows down in the middle. It does, yeah. Like I say, it dips in the middle mm. a little bit, but it's got that magic. Yeah. And that, that magic, I tell you what, that makes up for a lot of that slow pace. Yeah, it really so. does, yeah. Because by the end, it really you're, just, does. you're left going like, oh, I was never bored. You don't care by the end. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, and the last tweet, we're doing four because we only got four, and I don't like to do three if we <clears> got four because then it feels like I'm just excluding one person. Um, yes. So Joshua Broadhurst writes in, this ep is tainted for me because, <laughs> because of Holly Earl, play in brackets, plays Lily. Uh, as a few months after this episode, she appeared in Skins playing a very different character. <laughs> Uh, yeah. One month, where's father? The next month, not caring where father is because she wants to bone. <laughs> <laughs> Ep is all right, but nothing special. Um, I wanted to read that anyway um, because you've been rewatching Skins. Do you know who this character is in Skins? I uh, I do, but they're not in where I'm up to yet. So ah, okay. they're, I'm I'm currently on series four of Skins, where I'm watching it. They appear, I believe. In either series five or six, oh, the ones I that believe. no one watched, the ones that no one watched. But I, I, I know of, I know specific. I remember the episode she's in, and I know specifically the character that she plays. Yeah. Um. And <laughs> interesting storyline. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> interesting. But look it up. If I'm not, I'm not saying what it is on this podcast, but just look it up if you want. I'll tell you after the show. Okay. But, um. Yeah. Interesting. It must be awful so. if you're not. We we made an entire That's running all joke about I... cum sagas. You will understand when I when I tell you, okay? Sweet but, Jesus. Yeah, I'm not bringing that up on this episode. Uh, but anyway, that is... Uh, she is actually, I'm going to say, the uh, one of two Skins alum to appear in this episode. Um, in this episode? Yes. Skin. Can I get it? Can I get it? Can I find it? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, obviously, uh, uh, Mr. Smith, right? No. No? Or maybe... If that is true, then num- then one of three. Then who? Bill Bailey. Oh, of course, Bill Bailey's Maxie's dad, right? Yeah. Maxie's dad. Yeah. yeah. He dances with a dog. He does. Oh, man, Bill Bailey and his dancing yeah. dog. Good on him. Yeah. Nobody Are tells me nothing. <laughs> Nobody tells me nothing. That's a different movie. Yeah, I know. Anyway, and that is the show. If you've enjoyed listening, thank you. <clears throat> nope, that's... never mind. If... You, nope, that's still wrong. You good? <laughs> no, you haven't. St- you did this last week. I tried as to well. be silky smooth with it. No, I didn't do it last week because it was cut out last week. All right. <laughs> okay, sorry. So that actually I guess didn't this is cut out as well. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't know what right. you're recording, but it's not the truth. Uh, thank you very okay. much for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please flee. Fuck. <laughs> Fucking hell, man! I have to leave all this in as well. <laughs> oh. Right, thank you very much for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to leave us a little five star review. That would be very much appreciated. And you can follow us on Twitter at Still Got Legs Pod. You can also email your thoughts on over to Still Got Legs Podcast at gmail.com. And we have a Discord server. The link to join is in the show notes. A massive, massive hearty thank you and shout out to Nina for managing the short form content as well as all the TikToks and Reels. I don't know why I said as well as, it's just the TikToks and the Reels. Uh, and also thank you to Pierce for being the Discord Sheriff. Also, if you feel so inclined, we have a Ko-Fi link in the show notes if you want to help us out with the running of both of the shows. Everyone is still welcome to enjoy these episodes for free forever. If you do want to help out the show, then the best thing you can do is to just let someone know. Maybe you have a Whovian friend you can share the beautiful podcast with. That would be very, very cool. 
And speaking of both shows, Nathan, we have another podcast, don't we? I don't think you mentioned both shows at all. But yeah, speaking <laughs> of, we do have another podcast. It is called Another Happy Pod, uh, where each and every week we discuss something from the realm of pop culture, be it a movie, be it a TV show, be it a video game, be it whatever X-Men movie we're talking about this week. Uh, and last week's was uh, one of them, and this week's is another one. So stay tuned and <laughs> give, give them a listen. Incredible work from us. <laughs> <laughs> if this if this outro sounds like a mess, some of it I left in. Believe me, there was far more that didn't make it. In. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was fun. Anyway, thank you for listening. We will see you next Monday at ten a.m. Um, happy New Year's! Follow me on Threads. I'm trying to stay off Twitter. Anyway, bye. <laughs> love you.